guys, it's Christine Bertram coming to you live from the Hive on a Friday night. <laughs> we are going to be doing the celebration Hoover on Rock class. You guys, I feel like I'm so discombobulated. <laughs> My mom left about 30 minutes ago. She came in for the afternoon and she helped me work on putting class cards together. So whenever cards get designed, uh, those are always the first cards that get made. But then I have to make extra so that when I'm having class, that there's, sample, there's samples to look at. So there's usually two or three cards extra that are always needing to get made. And with all the designing that Diane and Chris and I have been doing for the last three weeks, there was a lot of class cards to put together. So my mom's my helper. She comes in and she helps me by putting the adhesive on the back. She does the bone folding. Um, she gets the privilege of putting embellishments on because though that is always the best part about doing a card, right, is embellishing it. Hi, Linda Hall. Hi, Janet Flanagan. Hi, Kathy King and Linda Hodge and Doris Monson and Carla Lake. Woohoo! So let's make sure I've got my internet. I've been running back and forth between the house and the hive today. And so my phone doesn't always pick up the hive internet. So if I am watching from a, a faintly distant internet, the it freezes all the time. Hi, Cindy Runtree and Ann Bellinger and Melody Miller. Woohoo! Okay, so we got to connect to the hive. So Diane and I made a card this morning. She came over. And so I'm so excited because I threw an idea out to Diane. Hi, Betty Pyle and Kathy and Karen and Susan and Sherry Martin and Feline. Woohoo, you guys. Oh, my goodness. We have so many people. Did I miss anybody? I don't think I did. Uh, but Diane uh, and I usually do the um, let's just stamp together. Hi, Stacey Burns. And so we've got all of the let's just stamp done for March, April, and May. Oh, I'm so excited, you guys. Like, so that's far ahead for me. So that's one class that's basically done for the next three months. Um, we're pretty much done with March. Hi, Linda and Marsha. And so now Chris and I are working on some April class cards. But the waves of the future is what I'm calling it, but it's the ocean waves. So Stampin' Up! has uh, some new products that are coming out starting on Tuesday, March 1st. Hi, Sandy Zadoon. Hi, Kathy. And um, March 1st, there's a new set of products. Hi, Wendy Westmoreland, called waves of the ocean or wave something. Somebody who is a demonstrator might help me out here and just throw it in the comments because I can't think of what it is off the top of my head. Hi, Sue Somerville. But it's a, a new bundle that's going to be out early. Uh, it's going to be carried over to the new annual catalog. Hi, Jeannie Parker and Tammy Steckling. And so it's going to be carried over to the new catalog, but it's coming out with some coordinating products, some designer series paper, some foil paper, and some gems. Hi, Laura. And thanks for sharing everybody so far. I appreciate it. Um, and so it's got some coordinating products. Now, the coordinating products are only available while supplies last. Um, oh, Waves Sweet is what um, Feline just said it was. Hi, Julie. Hi, Debbie Schultz. And so I put a little planting seeds and <laughs> put a little bug in Diane's ear, planted a seed. And I said, hey, I don't have time to add another class to my schedule and to make more cards, you guys, from already, in addition to what's already planned, right? Because people tell me I'm already crazy the way it is with all that I have. So, but I'm like, Diane, would you like to do a class? And so she's in person only though. Uh, hi, Lynn Beasley. Um, hi, Mary Carls. Hi, De Oh, thanks for sharing everybody. Mary and Doris, I just saw your comments that you did and Tammy and Susan. Thank you guys. That's so awesome. And so Diane is doing an in-person class here. I think she said it's going to be March 15th. So in two weeks and she's working on designing. We designed one card together and then we brainstormed for her second two cards. And so they're so cool. Once I have them, you guys, I will share with them with you so that you can see what she's working on. Um, and yeah, they're going to be so cool though because that blue foil paper is so awesome and there's some really intricate dyes. So it's very exciting. Um, oh, so Feline says she can't remember the whole name though. <laughs> Lots of beautiful blues and greens. And I have mine upstairs because we were working on it. So that's one of the downfalls about having my design area up in my house yet in my craft room. Uh, I did not build a craft space for like design work. Uh, uh, can we buy the DSP if we're not local? Well, no, the, do you mean class? It's not going to be offered online. This class is going to be an in-person only uh, class. So I will share the pictures with you. Um, and 
I have decided for Tip Tuesday that my tip is gonna include something along um, the lines of this uh, new product. And then the card that we designed today, I made an extra kit. So on Tip Tuesday, we're gonna make a card together. So you'll get to see one of the cards made um, live. Hi, Donna from Florida. Woohoo. PDF. No, no. So Diane's doing this class and I'm not even involved in the other two cards from a design perspective. And so there won't be a PDF for it, but um, I will go through making the one card with you guys on Tuesday for Tip Tuesday. I had it in my head. I'm like, oh, I bet I could do this for Tip Tuesday. Um, so that's awesome. And the other cards, I'll show you guys pictures um, of what she did and kind of walk through it in, um, in a class sometime. Yes, uh, date night. We'll watch the replay. Have fun. Oh, enjoy your date night, Sandy. I hope you have a great time. Have fun. Do lots of date things. <laughs> Get some kisses out of them, right? <laughs> ID Serena. All right. So, oh, D, I just realized that I wrote your name wrong. I put two E's instead of two R's. And I don't know if I did that on anything that I sent to you, but I inadvertently did that somewhere. I just saw when I looked at your name close up, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's two R's and not two E's. Waves of the ocean is what Doris said. So yeah, it's a very pretty suite. I didn't bring it down. So I'm just teasing you guys right now. But come Tuesday, I will have all the products in front of me. I'll share everything with you. It's gonna be the first day that as a customer, you can order the stuff. And so, uh, so that's what we'll spend our time on Tuesday talking about for Tip Tuesday. Hi, Sarah. Waves of Inspiration is the name of the stamp set. That is correct. Well, Waves of the Ocean is the collection, I think. So I don't know why they do the weird, like two different names for everything. It just, just to confuse us, I think. So you guys, look at the board back here. Every square is full, which is amazing. So that means that's board number eight, if I'm not mistaken, is full. And I have a waiting list for the next board. Sherry Martin, you're on it. I just saw your order come through. Hi, Laura. Lori from Lake Elmo, Minnesota. I always like, <laughs> I've probably said this in the past, but when I see Elmo, I always think of Elmo, the, the red furry Sesame Street monster. <laughs> and he always makes me giggle. So, um, so Sherry, you're on there. And then Laura Wood, you gave me an order today for some paper pumpkin subscription. I got your name on the board. You got the last two spots and then you're going to get the first two spots that I pick on the next board for you. So how I'm going to do the next board because we only have what? We have Saturday, Sunday, Monday. We have three days left of celebration. And what I decided that if the next board gets 10 names, we'll do a $10 gift certificate. If the board gets 15 names, we'll do a 15. If it gets 20, we'll do a 20. And if we get a full board, <laughs> I don't know if that'll happen. <laughs> That's that's a lot, but if it happens, you never know, we'll do another $25 gift certificate. But I figured we'll do it in increments of five. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25. And that drawing, I will plan to do that Tuesday when we do Tip Tuesday Live. So how does that sound? All right, Um, what else do I have for announcements? Oh, th speaking of that, there are three days left of celebration, meaning that uh, there's three days left to qualify for my celebration celebration which is what the online Facebook, um, I should say the via, the Facebook Live is next week. Uh, I'm gonna flip the camera down. So there were three different ways you could earn a spot. Uh, Laura Wood, you just qualified. <laughs> so you earned a spot um, with your order today. Um, and I need to do a little homework this weekend investigating. I had, uh, oh gee, you got your bow maker. Oh my gosh, that shipped out Tuesday and today's Friday. So late in the day Tuesday. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, three days. Awesome. So mail to Maryland is doing good. Uh, so this, I have everybody, so I had January tracked. And if you've placed orders in February and I caught it right away that you qualified, I tried to let you know, but I need to do some homework and figure out who else has qualified and let you know. And then I'll try to get your um, invitation to you. I did send an email out to the entire community saying what the event is about. And then once you earn a spot, I'll let you know. And hi, Kathy Groves, standing in line to vote. I love it. <laughs> uh, so what it is, is if you place $150 in orders through me, not yourself, <laughs> through me as your um, demonstrator, which you can be a demonstrator and still shop from me because I have a lot of people, demonstrators that buy product from me to get classes for free. And I also have a lot that pay the fee. So it's vice versa. It's always whatever works best for you. But if it is over 150 through me since January 4th, you qualify. 
if you're new on my team, um, I try to use this as a, a learning opportunity that once you've placed your first order, you kind of qualify to be able to attend the event for free. And I've had a, three people so far that have done that, which is awesome. And then if you're on my team and you have two new people that get added to your team, then you also qualify. So there's three different ways to earn a spot. So it's free uh, um, to watch the Facebook Live next week for anybody, but to get the make and take packet, which will end up in the end making this cute little paper pumpkin box. Um, you'll have to have your own sentiments for those of you at home, but you'll get a quarter pack of the designer paper. You'll get labels, a little little a little slips of ribbon, and a, a row of the iridescent rhinestones. And depending on what you stamp for your sentiments, I'll tell you what stamp sets are used in your PDF instructions, but I'll, I made this into like a little pocket thing so that you can put little gift cards in here. Like if you have somebody's birthday coming up to get them like $10 gift cards, $5 gift cards, 20, 30, 40, 50, however much, but made it into a little um, pocket thing here, pocket accordion thing. Hi, Denise. Um, Jeannie, yes! You did, I told you that in the text message. You gave me your order about 10 minutes ago, which it coupled with your order that you did when you were here for the Winter Creative Escape, that puts you over the 150. So yes, I have you signed up. Well, I don't have you on the list. I need to add you to the list. I need to make sure I get your name on the list. That is the most important thing. But um, yeah, so Jeannie, your order tonight that you just gave me, as long as it was over 50, which it was because you picked a celebration item. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what happens. If you guys had some orders in January, and you weren't over 150, but then you gave me an order in February, you might have gotten it. Uh, I have to put those dots together yet. So, or, and Tammy, you already got yours. You, yep, you got your package. You just said that. Hi, Terry Costin. So that's what we're going to be doing next week, um, Thursday. I do have, um, the class is um, in person on Wednesday. And then also it's Saturday morning to those who qualify. So that's what next week is, celebration, celebration. And then you guys, we go into the fun fold. Wow. <laughs> I think the fun folds is going to be my biggest class ever. At the moment, I have 75 people signed up. I'm planning to make 80 kits, you guys. When I get five more people signed up, I think I'm going to cut it off. <laughs> so my, my mom is going to have a bird. And literally, she's going to have a bird <laughs> when we're getting these up next week because of this card right here, you guys. <laughs> so hi, Carla Cordes. So this bird is from the Soaring Solos. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 little pieces. You know, she was, she was actually helping me. These were the cards we were assembling today. <laughs> and she said to me, uh, yeah, you might want to put those into a little baby poly bag because then they won't go all over <laughs> oh, like Kathy Grove's arm <laughs> or your guys' floor or under your shoe or under your butt or under your like shirt in your bra. <laughs> Some of the pieces are super small. So my mom's advice to me is we got to put all those 15 little pieces in a little poly bag and then you won't lose them. And so so that's why I said my mom's going to have a bird and that's why because so for as tedious as this card is going to be, you guys are going to want to watch the video for this card. And this one is in two weeks. It's March 10th. You are going to want to watch how to assemble these birds if you haven't done it before. I luckily had Carissa's guiding hand with me when we were working on them together. Uh, she showed me how to put them together. If you didn't have somebody that had um, the knowledge, it would be super difficult. Um, so yes, that is my disclaimer on this one. So, um, so I'm going to flip down, show you these again. And just so you know, um, I know I had maybe three people even sign up today. So I'm getting close to, to, to cutting this class off. So if you're on the fence about the fun folds, I will, I will take whoever like registers via tomorrow. And if I've reached that, whatever number I've reached, I, I mult I, I go up to the fours, right? So four, eight, 12, 16, 80, 84, 88. And then I'm going to say, done. I'm planning for that. I'm not making more. She is the greatest. So if you're on the fence and you sign up, I'll, I'll take it through this weekend because I have to cut all the paper for this over the weekend as well. So, so this was that triple easel card, you guys. So that looks like this. Really, all you need are two sentiments. And then this is, oh, the timeless tile. I, need, I think I need to buy that because I borrowed Carissa's. Um, she brought that. There was a little pocket card. So that opens up like that. And I've got, you'll need a stapler for this one, you guys. Um, so basically, hi, Marsha Long from Texas. You'll need a sentiment, some little focal images on the side, and then a sentiment on the inside. This one is another little side pocket card. Um, designer paper back here. Sentiment is what you'll need. 
and some sort of a flower to put here if you want. Oh, you didn't even see the back. So on the back, you'll get another slip of paper because we were like, well, where are you gonna write your love note on here? Hi, Penny Powell. So that's that one. And the last is the Seize the Day. Um, so this is the Use Glad Press and Seal. Yep, that would work as well, Lori. So this one, if you don't have the octopus, you'll still get the die cut. And you'll also get a white piece in case you want to stamp something else on your own. And then it opens up, the fold looks like this. So this is my fun folds that I have for you guys. That's in two weeks from last night. Um, if you guys missed it real quick, this was the mystery card from Monday. If you guys didn't watch last night, I did show it at the end of class. If you missed Kelly, the Technique Thursday, you guys yesterday, the Scrappy Strip Technique. Um, compliments to Arliss Knoop for helping us. Um, with the Technique Thursday this week. So that was awesome. So in case you guys missed that, um, uh, hand pen, just a little note for you guys. I went into last night with technically none left and I went out with seven extra. <laughs> so I'm making eight extra ink, paper, scissors, Karen Stag. I'm not sure if you're watching, but I did get your email today that you thought you missed out and you were wondering if I still have kits. So you are on my list and I think I only have one left. Um, so if anybody, you'd have to comment in here so I can say, yep, you got it. Um, if I don't hear anybody, then I'll put it in an email, I think. But hi, Lila Erickson from Fort Myers. Uh, so this is what we did last night. So I have one unaccounted for, I believe, at this point. But these were last night's class cards, you guys. It was the ink, paper, scissors with hand pen. Just very, very pretty. The PDF tutorial is already in my online store in case you want to buy that. Um, the end of class, you guys, tonight, what we have is the, I did the drawings for the Heart and Home. This was the class last week, Thursday. So I'll announce the winners for these four cards and I know somebody who's watching that I said hi to your name was picked for that so you guys I have one set of heart and home left I ended up making 12 extra of this one so there's I believe one unaccounted for nobody's called me to tell me that I missed um <laughs> sending their kit to them but I did get a call from Wendy this morning and I feel horrible hi Linda Hunt so hi Carmen Melinda so it has happened and it does happen to some of you I tried to explain this to Wendy and she got it. She completely understood. And we all take Naughty Nancy's advice when it comes to, it's just paper. It's all good. Nobody died. And nobody was in a car accident. Nobody died. Nobody got hurt. It's all only paper. And so that's the motto that we try to live by, right? Patience is a virtue. And we all just want to have good time stamping. And so it does happen from time to time that I miss writing a name down and I will respond and say, hey, I, Carmen Melendez, I can think of you. I can think of mm, Kathy King. It happened to you just recently. When I was transitioning out of, um, on, to my leave of absence and I was doing my full-time job and this, it happens where if I don't have my class sign-up sheets with me and I don't keep them with me 110% of the time, I'll comment and I try to pin your, um, your email or I'll try to pin your text. And, and if I don't get it written on the sheet, I uh, I don't mail you the kits. That's how it works. Um, that's just how I work. And Wendy was so great about it. She was awesome. And she was like, yep, I'm good with it. And now she's getting fun folds and I can save her the shipping on fun folds and it all works out in the end. Um, but with that being said, I need to make one more set of celebration um, hoorah rock cards for tonight, you guys. And if I'm making one, I'm making four, right? And so this is good. It's, it's good for three more people. So if anybody else gets done with class tonight and they're like, gosh, I wish I would have gotten the kits for this class, three. That's what I have because I'm making one, I'm making four. I, that's always my motto for cutting card stock. It's, that's how it always always been for 20 years, 15 years, however long it's been. Um, so if you guys are seeing this, message me um, while we're live so that I can see it, but also follow up with an email, text, or Facebook message, okay? Oh, Penny Powell. See, you're right on the spot here, Penny. Um, so, <laughs> and Penny, you also had the um, hand pen from last night. So, um, I haven't reached out to you yet about what to send because we'll figure out the shipping part of it. You guys, um, and Feline, see, this is how it goes. See, Wendy, it was a good thing that I forgot not maybe for you, but you were okay with it, which is cool. But now I have Penny and Feline and now I have one left. So that's how it goes, you guys. So, <laughs> all right, perfect. So Penny and Feline, I do have you marked down on a piece of paper here, and then um, there would be one left. So hi, Holly Paplo. So, okay, I think that kind of covers everything. Um, at the end of class two, we'll also do a door prize drawing for the class, and we'll do the celebration board drawing. Woohoo! So, okay, 
So let's do a quick roll call and see who is, okay, I'm not gonna say there's another kit left. I'm gonna see if I missed anybody. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what happened to me with Kathy last night. <laughs> I got done. So if you're, that's why I love it when you guys watch the class live with me and I do a roll call for one of the particular reasons is to call it your name, say hi, but then like Kathy didn't hear her name and Wendy didn't like get an, a PDF tutorial. So it's like you guys help me connect the dots and put things together too. We all keep the ship afloat. <laughs> Let's just say it that way. All right. Hi, Patricia Saddle from Indiana. All right, Kathy King, Sue Somerville, Linda Hodge, Mo Stites, Sandy Wicklander, Barb Moynan, Deanna Stell, Carla Lake, Jeannie Parker, Lila Erickson, Mary Carls, Dee Serena, uh, Doris Munson, Tammy Steckling, Susan Reed, Lynn Beasley, Angela Knutson, Christina Bernards, Kathy McMahon, Patricia Settle, Carmen Melendez, Cheryl Thomas, Shirley Peacock, Linda Hunt, Barbara Barco, Laura Sullivan, Latokia Trigg, Wendy Westmoreland, and then we're adding here Penny Powell and Feline Mays. Perfect. So we had a great size class, you guys. All in all, um, I'm at 40. So I had made 36 kits, and with the extra four, it'll make it a 40. It's awesome. So I know with Celebration Celebration, or Celebration Who Are I only do this class one time in person. And we did that class on Wednesday together as a group. And it was determined, and I emailed everybody that did the online version. Um, it was determined that there was one piece of paper. So if you guys haven't checked your emails, look at you guys, so many people here, I love it. If you haven't checked your email from this morning yet, I tried to get it out before Diane got here. I haven't done this that I can think of with paper. I know one time I forgot to put a teeny tiny slip of um, linen thread for that pineapple card back in July of last year, but I can't say that I've ever forgotten to put a mat in a card. <laughs> that that might be a first for me and somebody, like uh, an entire mat, like for the entire class. I know along the way stuff, like when I have helpers, like one card might be missing one thing, <laughs> but I missed a white mat. And so for those of you that didn't check your emails, didn't see this yet, it might be news to you, but the one card, it's um, a four and a quarter by three inch white piece. And I think that most of the people that are signed up for the online version, you'd have white card stock at home that I'm hoping you can suffice with something at home, or you could be even use a color. But if for any reason I told people in the email, if I need to send a three by four and a quarter piece of white, I am happy to do so. So, but <laughs> it just was like, wow. And we double check and we triple check things and we've caught things before we've kitted them up and we're like, yep, oh, we gotta remember that piece. So yeah, we try our best. That's all I can say is we do try our best. All right, so. We did this class on Wednesday. They had a fun time with it. Um, it was good. Uh, there's four different cards. And so when I do the Celebration Catalog Launch Party class in January, I always pick out my most favorite things right away. And then when it comes time for the hoo -ra, it's like, well, what's left? <laughs> like what stamp sets aren't my favorite, but like I gotta use them because if I don't use them, then you guys can't see them in action. And maybe you see them and it used in a way that you're like, oh yeah, I wish I would've gotten that. And they're still free right now until Monday with a purchase, um, either a $50 purchase or a $100 purchase. So one of the ones, I'll be honest with you, I had a hard time with the Island Vibes card class, but I knew I definitely wanted to use that pineapple. And this card was a tag team effort with Kelly Lamb, who helps me, and Deb Norman. So Deb Norman sent me a card for my birthday that had that DSP blocking. Kelly did a Technique Thursday on it. But I'm like, hey, will you try to use the island pineapple thing? And this is kind of what I have thinking in my head. And so Kelly designed the card. And then I went off of Kelly's design. So this heads card has came from three different sources, kind of. And so we are going to do, so this pulls in the island vibe. So this is one of the cards we're going to make. And then this one, you guys, I had a really, I loved the, the friendly hello. So this one uses that it's a bundle where you get designer paper and you get the stamp set. So I had no problem. This one was one of my favorites. I had this design back in January. This one came from, um, the idea came from, I got a card and I don't know 
where I have it now. It's upstairs in my design room. But it was the fold. I cased the fold, so I got to use up some of the, more of the designer paper, but pulled in the love, um, bouquet of love hybrid folder here in the dies. And so it made a cool, fun fold. You guys, whenever it's celebration time, I try to use larger quantities of designer series paper. And then the other one that I hadn't used is the driving by. <laughs> Penny said she only got the island vibe after seeing the card. Exactly. That's like the only reason I got the stamp set was for the pineapple. I'll be honest with you. And then this one, I knew I wanted this one driving by because of the Herbie Love Bug. I have a 1969 Herbie Love Bug in my garage right now, covered up. Poor little guy. Um, he's waiting to get outside. But um, this one used um, almost a whole sheet of the six by six designer paper that was sunshine and rainbows. And so I coupled that with the driving by and just another fun fold. So these are what we have in store for you guys tonight. Um, I don't know which one. We'll start with the purple first. It was a sleeper for me, but now I have used it quite a bit. Great. See, that's just it. Until you see the stamp sets in use or the stamps from the stamp sets in use, you might not think. And you know what? They're free. And by the time you're done with celebration, a lot of people generally are able to get everything that they want and, and then more. <laughs> so, all right. The purple heart is your favorite. So, um, we're going to start with the purple heart first. I have all my stuff back here. We're going to pull this in. And so how this works with the designer series paper is, um, there's actually, let me just see if this thing needs to get. Okay. So you guys remember the protocol. If it freezes for any reason, just hang tight. I just need to do a little turning off of up here, turning it back on. And usually within a minute or two, we're back in business. But I was able to update, um, and Barb has them all, so do I. I was able to update my um, my version of my tablet to the 15.3.1, and so now they match. So I'm really curious to see if tonight we have no issues with the freezing, because Jennifer Merle Hampshire is the one that told me these need to be linked um, with the same update version. So, okay, so let's get to business here, you guys. So these three cards... Um, I need to explain because you got one of the colors, right? This is 12 by 12 paper. And when you cut this like this, it's 12 inches long and you get basically two mats out of one card. Okay. So the, the thing with this friendly hello is they had three patterns, all different colors that were all very similar. So I was able to make a card with so much designer paper because I was the, the layout of the card allowed me to, okay, one's Pale Papaya, one's Coastal Cabana, one's Fresh Freesia. So for all those that took class, I have no idea what color you have. You got a color and, <laughs> and I coordinated this with this and then your heart got coordinated. So, um, so that was what one thing to expect. So the kits, oh my gosh, you guys, I did so good. I transitioned all of my, you guys are gonna be so proud of me. You know why? Do you know what happened to me last Sunday, this past Sunday? I brought the wrong card kit down for class and we had to fly by the seat of our pants. And I don't, I do okay, but I don't like to have to do stamping that way. So look at this, you guys. This is how much we've been doing. These are all the card kits for the next however many that are done. And I was just thinking, oh man, I didn't bring the card kits down, but you know what? They're all right here. Look at that. How exciting. I put them in a new little spot right next to me. And <laughs> so I never can pick the wrong card kit. Again, you guys, I learned my lesson. Okay, so we're gonna start with this one and my sample is the peach one. So it's not peach, it's pale papaya. Okay, so what you guys need for this one though is it's the calming camellia. Comma, 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 chameleon. Sorry, you're gonna have that in your head all night. We did on Wednesday, We somebody sang it and then we all started singing it and it's all how it goes downhill from there. So. This is the stamp set that you get free with hosting a $300 workshop and um, or your own $300 order, but it has to be at one time. If you do not have this flower, any flower will be just fine, okay? So, but a lot of the sentiments, all the sentiments and this ferny thing is what got used in this card. This right here, the love and happiness, that's, that comes with if, as a bundle with the heart die cut and then the embossing folder, that's the hybrid. I didn't use anything from here, but it would give you different words if you wanted to use something else, okay? So how it works is basic gray is the color that got used primarily for all the sentiments and the camellia. 
But when you go on the inside here, I did pull in pale papaya. Hi, Kathy Jackson from Iola, Wisconsin. Um, I did pull in pale papaya on my flower or the heart. So the heart from here got used on the inside. But for this one, you guys, <laughs> you're like, oh, it's so pretty. It's so blue. And you open it up. It's like, wow, it's green. So this blue heart did not look good inside. So I recut out white hearts for everybody so that the white heart, it just it matched better on the inside. And then there's a little bit of green ink on the flower there. Not the flower. It's a leafy thing. So then on the pale for a fresh freesia, on this one, it's stamps. You can see it's just very light. It's like um, the florally stamp. Okay, so I did pull in those corresponding colors. This is the big camellia stamp that will get stamped on the white square. I need papaya for this right here. So we'll set this off to the side. And then I don't need the other colors, but in your kit you'll have three silver metallic pearls. And then we use that one. We'll use happy birthday. For some reason, I don't know why, but I have thinking of you on your special day that came from inspired thoughts. I don't know if I'll use that, but we'll just see here. And then there's this swirly thing here that adds decoration, okay? So let's move this out of the way and see what else you guys have in your card kit. So <laughs> let's see. This right here is the designer paper. So you guys, this is such a cool layout for a card if you really want to showcase designer. And you guys all... I shouldn't say all. A lot of you have a lot of designer series paper, right? We all love to collect. And this, it allows you to showcase both sides. And so I have all your papers scored for you already at four. So four, six, and eight. Um, what are the other two color names? So this one, this is Fresh Freesia. This is Coastal Cabana. And this is Pale Papaya, okay? So Pale Papaya, Coastal Cabana, Fresh Freesia. Um, in color, in color, and then normal color. <laughs> um, these two are staying around for next year, so they're not the ones that are retiring. So you guys, I have it scored for you at four inches already, so you can just fold that and then burnish that. And then it goes back one. So when I gave you guys your kits, in your kit, it was folded like this, just to keep it simple and easy for my mom. Um, hi, Linda Bailey from Iowa. So that folds back then. And then this one needs to fold this way. And when you do this, it's very important that you line up your corners and then bring the fold out. Oh, good. I'm glad that made sense, Wendy. Okay. And so then now what happens is when you open this up, you have that extra flappy thing. And so that's a base. Then you guys in your kit have a thick white. That is five and a quarter. Nope. It's five and a half by four and a quarter. It's a but just a quarter sheet of paper. That's gonna be your a mat for the back. You have some more white in here. <laughs> this is the white you were missing, you guys. I, <laughs> this is your three by four and a quarter. So um, if you guys can make sure you have that ready to go, that is your piece for the inside, for your sentiment. Let's see, I'm gonna die there. So that's your piece for the inside right there. Now, if you would like it a little bit bigger, you could have cut it bigger, um, but I cut it smaller so that you would see more of the designer paper around the edge. That's why I cut that three by four and a quarter. This gray piece was just a scrap. You guys, I tried to use up scraps. When I was cutting this as three and a half by three and a half, the first thing that happened was the heart got cut out and that got set aside for the inside. And then this got embossed with the bouquet of love embossing folder. And then when I figured out that was three and a half by three and a half, all I did was cut a gray mat that <laughs> this is two and three quarter by like three and three quarter. And it was just enough so that you could see a little gray around. And then you've got this piece is where your camellia goes. And so that'll end up getting stamped and go behind here. And then this little strip here. Um, oh, you guys. I don't know if I have any shimmer gray ribbon down here. Hmm. Hmm, we might have to improvise. In your kit, you guys have about nine inches of the shimmer gray ribbon. I completely ran out. We just designed, we just designed 
Chris and I, the Daisy Lane cards we talked about yesterday, um, we used up all my gray granite ribbon. So we'll pull in something else. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see what I can find in my drawer or ribbon. Okay, so let's do a little stamping first. Let's get stamp happy and set aside the parts that don't need stamping. And actually, you guys, your heart. Um, the name of this class, Patsy, is Celebration Hoorah-ra. So it's our sending off and farewell to celebration, which ends on February 28th. Uh, as I currently speak, if nobody else tells me I miss sending them a class kit package, I would have one left. So I'm going to wait till the end of class and make sure I didn't miss anybody. And if I didn't, then I would have one more Patsy. So you could get it if you are interested. So you have to let me know if you are interested and then we will definitely, I'm, my phone just fell over. We will definitely connect. Okay. Oh, it doesn't want to stay. Okay, perfect. All right, so stamping. So I'm going to move these out of the way, you guys, because I don't think we need to have all three samples here in front of us right now. And since we are working off the peach one, I'm going to leave the peach one here. All right, so basic gray is the... What was that embossing folder? You know what? I'm going to go grab it, Penny, so you can see it. Because you guys, I love to show you things so you can actually visualize it. So it's called the bouquet of love. Oh, I grabbed the wrong dies. Isn't that funny? Hang on. It's called the bouquet of love um, hybrid embossing folder. And it looks like this. And then, hi, Cheryl Thomas. And then these are the dies. And then the stamp set that goes with it. If you want to do the whole entire bundles, like somewhere between $45 and $50, I don't know, $50, $25 maybe, you get all three of these things. Or you can buy this as a bundle, or like this is the hybrid du duet, so it's embossing folder and dies. So for this card, I use this heart, and I use that label. I've gotten a lot of use out of that label already. So that's where this comes from. It's right away in the spring mini catalog. It's the, with the Valentine's Day stuff, actually. So... All right, and Patsy, as long as I see your notes here, so we're going to put you down here so I don't forget. All right, perfect. So we're going to do our stamping first. So happy birthday comes from the Camellia set, and we're going to flip this over in practice to see how it stamps. And while I went to get, um, I went to go get the the bundle for Penny, I used it as an excuse to go get this pale papaya ribbon. We'll use that instead. So um, the, the shimmer gray is really pretty though. Um, hi, Hildy. Okay, so I need for this to go away so that I can see. So this fits in here just perfectly. <laughs> I will tell you, I generally always stamp my sentiments and then die cut, but for class, you guys, it's really hard for that. So I always give you the little, um, the die cut. So that actually looked good. I like that. And then our camellia. <laughs> it's not a, com I want to say come a chameleon, da -da -da -da. but it's not, I get it. So grab a bigger piece of paper. So when you have a bigger stamp like that, sometimes it's easier to reverse upside down ink it. So put the stamp flat and grab the ink pad and then this would get stamped right in the center. Now, if you don't have the camellia, it's okay. Grab something else. But you just want to get it stamped right in the center of the white. And you want it to have a really good image. So ink it up good. But you will be surprised at how nice the detail. This isn't a distinctive stamp. And so it actually has such detail in that stamped image. It just blows my mind how pretty that is. That detail is just awesome. Okay, so that's the basic gray. And then we're going to stamp that off so it's ready to clean. So that's done. So then on our heart and the inside. So the camellia had a combination of things. And so we put happy birthday on the outside. It is basic gray, Hildy. Yep, basic. You better believe it. It is basic gray. And so we have here... It's the little things that make life great. I love being your friend. And 
thinking of you on your special day. So we're going to do the I love being your friend. So whoever gets this is going to be able to send this to somebody that they love. Yeah, that Camellia, it just blew my mind when I actually, it was spot on. I know they had issues um, with, the, remember there was that etched in nature stamp set that they had last year and it didn't do that detail like that. I was like, they hit that right, right on the nail. So this guy's going to go here. So we're going to make this a birthday card. All right, so then that's done. That we didn't use. That's done. So we're ready to clean those. Oh, and then there's the squiggly thing. So, so grab whatever matching color ink you do have if you want to decorate some stuff, you guys. So there's this squiggly thing. And I'm like, well, we're going to try to use it. And mm, so is it still available? So Laura Sullivan, this is free, yes, with a $300 workshop or order. Mm -hmm. So I do have special treats in store. Oh, I don't know if I want to use this. It just, it's kind of weird to me. I'm not going to use it. <laughs> We're going to pass. <laughs> I do have special treats in store next week during the celebration celebration for my customers who all in all spent over $300 collectively between orders. So I don't want to give away any too much hints or surprises, but I know that I've had customers that have ordered a here, like a hundred here and a hundred there and a hundred here, and all of a sudden they're over three hundred dollars. Well, um, then I've earned a bunch of these stamp sets, and so I I plan to give back to my uh, customers who have helped me uh, through celebration. Um, <laughs> Deb Norman's completely agrees with me. Don't use it. <laughs> Wish it would go in the book. Yeah, it's so pretty. So you guys, I'm just flipping over and adding that fur the fern thing. The fern thing, I can handle that. It's just adding a little texture to the background of our heart. And then I just did a little bit on the bottom corner. If you really wanted to get a little happy with this, you could do a little bit on the top too. You know, and just so it kind of offsets, it just adds a little hmm, add extra more ink. So yeah, so just Laura, I wouldn't worry so much um, <laughs> about the common camellia. I don't need you to go and spend like $300 on a workshop <laughs> just to get the stamp set because I believe, I believe that good things might be coming your way, Laura. So, okay, so that's done. And I think we are going to get some glue happy times here. All right. All right, let's do this first. This is easy. So all you have to do is flip this over and you are going to put a little bit on. Yeah, so you guys, I, I'm going to show you a picture from the catalog. And you're going to see where I got inspiration for this, this card I made. Yeah, it just adds a little bit of background to it. So all you're doing is adhering that to the back of the card. So you guys, this is the little celebration book. And... When I was working on designing this card, I knew what fold I wanted to do, but I didn't know how I wanted to make it. And I looked at this right here. You see that? It was Calypso Coral, but you see the heart and the label and the like the camellia back there? That's, that's where I got my inspiration for this card. So I looked at that, put some things together, <laughs> and that's what I came up with. <laughs> All right, so... <clears throat> let's do these two things. These are the insides. So this one's going to go here. And then when you glue your heart down, you only are putting adhesive on the, this left back side. Don't put it over to the side because it'll hang over and you will end up making a trick card. Okay, so we're going to set that there. Now, oh, we're going to put this one first because I want to show you where you would put the heart. So that goes here. Now the heart, you have choices. <laughs> so you could put it up, you could center it, you, you know, wherever you, I thought, well, I'll center it. But then when I realized my sentiment is there, that's when I chose to actually put it kind of up north of the equator so that it covers up the sentiment when this is closed, right? So that covers that sentiment. Um, here, oh, I did it up high there too. That's what I was thinking. So when this is closed, you see that little bit of pale papaya and then that. 
Now, this is how I would do this. Let's see if I got, what do I have for dimensionals? This girl's gotta grab a new thing of dimensionals. So, we are opening up a new pack. So you guys, this is how I open my dimensionals. I hate flaps. If you've ever, I did a, I did a tip Tuesday. I hate adhesive flaps like that. I like to take my scissors and pierce this on the end and I slide it open. And now I can grab my sheet and these go in and out very easily. I don't have to worry about that stupid tapey stuff on the back. <laughs> okay, so tell, ask me how I really feel about <laughs> adhesive like that. Okay, so now we're going to pop up the back side, you guys. There's a front and a back. The raised edges are your top. And so you're going to be putting dimensionals all the way around. Oh, thanks, Hildy. And then we're going to put... So this is where it works great for the little ones. And you guys, look, oh, I have some baby ones left right here. So we're going to put my little baby ones on the side. <clears throat> Do it really good. Get it nice and full here. Hi, Glenda from Australia. Woohoo! All right. So pick off the backings here. And now you're wondering what I'm doing, right? So uh, this is how I would do it because I'm not going to try to glue from the bottom up. I try to kind of work my way down. It's very important you get this flower where you want it. And don't pay any attention to like fitting it properly in here. Just get your flower where you want it situated. And so I'm not concerned on the, about the back, but I want my flower to be just right. Now, do you see though, my corner's hanging off the edge here? Don't worry about that. Just take your scissors and trim it off. And don't worry at all what the back looks like because you're just gonna trim off if it Depending on how you stamped it, it might be crooked that the white hangs out. Don't even think twice about it. Just cut it right off. You just don't want it hanging out the colored cardstock. Okay? So that was easy, right? All right. Now what you're going to do is put a little adhesive on this one. Don't go too close to the edge. And we're just going to be putting this now on the gray, the basic gray, right? So we put liquid glue. And the reason I didn't put liquid glue on the back of this white is because I didn't want to get glue over there yet because I would have gotten it on my table. So now I've got this where I want it. And then I'm going to flip this over. And now there's going to be glue everywhere there. And now I can place this on the front of my card where I want it. And I did go again north of the equator. So you see a little bit of designer paper on the right which is about equal to what I see on the left. And it is about equal top to bottom, but you would put it wherever you want it. Like that's how I thought, oh, that looks good right there. My heart is up higher, it seems. Okay. Oh, thanks Sue Somerville. All right, now the ribbon, you guys. I really tested people with this on Wednesday night. Everybody got like nine inches, right? This little thing is about three inches, not even. This little thing is like two and a half inches. I believe I wrote to my mom nine inches. So my mom cut all your ribbon at nine inches. And I will give you some advice. So this is what we call the lamb technique. I did this on a card last night. We did it last night on this card right here. And so if you make small, teeny, tiny loops and use a lot of ribbon going up the back, you're going to run out and you got to redo it. Okay. You, it's, it's like, because I think Bonnie was in class on Wednesday. She said it took her three tries to get it right. So, so you have to be like careful. And I'm going to try to explain this as we go. Because some of you have never done this with me. So it's called the Kelly Lamb. Her last name is Lamb, right? So that's why we call it the Lamb Technique. So when we're talking about ribbon, we know what we're talking about. So the bottom is where you want to put some tear and tape. Run it from one end to the other end. Don't worry if you go over because you can roll it back onto itself. And so I want to make sure I hit the end really good just so that I don't lose some stickiness at the end here. <clears throat> so now pick that off, right? So you've got your double-sided tape at the bottom. Now, let's just say that I have nine inches of this ribbon. So this is not the same ribbon, you guys. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I don't know if I have. I have some upstairs, but I'm not going to go run and get it. I feel like you guys have something like that. I had to guess 
about that much ribbon. And what you do to do the lamb technique, and we'll see how different this looks with the pale papaya. I'm a left, I'm a right-handed person, so I generally control things with my right and I hold things with my left. And what you wanna do is you wanna secure the end on the end of, or like, like let's say the top. And you're only putting the tape on the bottom. And I generally don't watch the back of this while I do it. I try to watch the front because what's important to me is what it looks like in the front. And when I mean low, um, smaller loops and bigger loops, this is what I mean. So you could make big loops like this. Like you see what I'm doing? I'm making big loops and you got four of them. And I'm feeling with the back with my fingers and I'm only catching it a little bit back there, right? So if you want to use more, let's say you had ribbon left and you did small, you could do, this is small. So you do them tight and close to each other like this. You're going to use more ribbon, okay? So the goal is to use what you have and make it end good. And if you need to cut off at the end, you can. But you see how much more ribbon I used? I have like that much left over versus like that. It's six inches, Lynn. Um, hang on. I'm going to do it with six inches here with you guys. So six inches. Look at that. We can make it work with six inches. You don't have to modify the lamb technique. It's all about, um, it's all about your loops, okay? So I have six inches just like you do, okay? I couldn't remember how much it was. So when you do this, little bit back here. Your goal is not to make big loops like this. Okay, so you don't want big loops. You're going to run out. You also, when you're putting it back here, you do not want the entire back to be covered with your ribbon. You're going to waste it. So six inches, you guys. I have six inches just like you do. So you're just going to be strategic about your Humpty Humps here. Okay, so six inches. If you got six inches, look at that. You got exactly six inches to the end. I'm gonna show that to you on a piece of white backing here so you can see. Six inches, Lynn Beasley, thank you so much for telling me it was six inches because I can show you here, you guys, I did it with six inches. And I even have them one bigger and one smaller. So here's the thing, if you don't like it, you can take it off and redo it. Okay, you can get it till it's exactly how you want it, but look at that, six inches, okay? So six inches is just fine. You shouldn't have to modify anything, but if you guys aren't fans of this technique, remember what I always tell you. These are your cards. You can change it, and I will not ever take offense to you guys changing, altering, or redesigning anything that I ever do because that's what being creative and crafty is all about, okay? So now when you're done though, the trick for this, you guys, you have to put another piece of double-sided tape over it. So Kelly did this for a paper pumpkin for that baseball kit back in May of last year. And I came home from Hawaii and her whole lamb technique had like kind of blown up. <laughs> and so what happens is if you don't put another piece of tape, it's kind of loosey-goosey. You need to secure this. And so once you have that tape, I actually will take that off. And now, here's the thing. You have, this is already popped up, but this is flat. So, what you have to be careful about how you put your dimensionals. I'm going to put one dimensional here, and then I'm going to double stack these other two. So, on the back, I'm going to flip it over, put a dimensional, and then I'm going to double stack it like a double stuff Oreo cookie. Okay? So, one, two, and then one, two. And then when it comes to the way left side, I'm only going to put one, okay? Do you know why? I hope you got that because this orange is already popped up where this is flat. And then you just find a little spot right there to nook it in there. And now because you have double there and one there, now your sentiment should be level, okay? That's how we got that, okay? So here it is with pale papaya. Not bad, it gets lost a little bit in translation, but there's the gray granite. So um, definitely doable with six. It's just a matter of being, yeah, who, somebody said it. Cindy, I think you said patience. You just need to be patient. If you run out of ribbon, alter your hoop, like lumps, your humps, or whatever you want to call them, your hoops, um, and make some, you just, you don't want to have a lot on the back. The trick is not to have it go up too high on the back. Six inches can, 
You guys, you learn to work with what you have, right? <laughs> All right. So, um, Stella. Stella is a girl's best friend. And you know what? We're just going to go over all of this. And I don't know if she needs a good squeeze in here or what I'm going to do. I think she plugged up on me last time. I didn't use her yesterday at all. I was afraid to. But <laughs> we're going to just go over all of that right there. And that puts a little bit of Stella action on the card. And then your pearls. Three pearls is what you guys should have in your card kit. You guys got to be careful opening. These are so little. They might stick to things. And so just be careful when you get them. And I cut them off upside down. I'm like, where did it go? It went right there. So one over here. Oh, and the other thing you might look for is if you have a flower center that you could put it in. That would work. And then get on here, little dude. Um, the center of your flower there. And lastly, there's no center, but I like, I don't know. You guys watch me a time or two. I, I like to do the threes, like one and then two <laughs> opposites. But put them wherever you envision them. So, you guys, we got one card done. Woohoo! Okay, so this is somebody's card that I'll announce that next week. So we're going to just set that on the pile there. Woohoo! you guys, we got, the, we got a fun fold done. So this is even a fun folds class, but two of the cards are actually fun folds. So I like to throw in those fun folds every now and then. Well, not every now and then. It's more the often than not. <laughs> so, okay. Let's clean our stamps, though, because I don't want to throw them all in here with them being all dirty. So the chamois, you guys, is in the catalog towards the back. Um, that's what I use to clean my stamps. I don't know, this little squiggle thing does not do anything for me. So we're gonna put him, I'll probably never use that stamp again. <laughs> but the camellia will get a little workout. Okay, so that one's good. That one's good. And happy birthday. And then one last one. So when it comes to something like this, I, I will generally just pick up the chamois. Don't be afraid. If you do pick up the chamois, just know you'll probably get your your fingers turned a different color. And then that's how it goes. All right, so we're done with the papaya. You guys, another little tip I do with my ribbon is on the end here, instead of having it loose, I put a little piece of tape. But when I put my tape on it, I always flip the end over so that it has a little tab so that it's not all like having to pick it off. So, okay, so Barbara likes the fun bowls. Yay. Okay. Next, let's do our island vibes. Put this away. Put these right here. And do this one. So this is the one we talked about that was like, ah. It, it, you, it didn't really trip a lot of triggers. But I knew that I loved the pineapple. So this is what the set looks like. Let's get that. Oh, it did, fell right out. Let's put that. Ah, well, it's right there. So, Island Vibes is the free set. It has that thing, <laughs> the, like the leaves, a pineapple, and then the plant. So, in the card, and you guys didn't see this, <clears throat> but I used the little foliage thing in the bottom left hand corner. So, it got used. <clears throat> so, this uses the bumblebee and the old olive. I really want my dimensionals to go in the right slot and then my tear and table fit. Perfect. You will need the white frayed ribbon, some linen thread, the pineapple, of course. And so this is a pin of poly, is what my dad says. It's a pin of poly. <clears throat> the faux sea glass shapes, which Amy asked last night, they are on back, um, they're on back order. They're out of inventory until we said sometime in April, I think. Sandy Wicklander told us when. I don't remember exactly. <laughs> and then these are the, these dies are called Amazing Thanks dies. So there's Amazing Thanks and You. And each one has an outline and then the detail that goes on top. And part of a bundle called the Amazing Silhouettes is with it. And that's how we got the thanks here. So you guys, there's the only stamping on the outside here is a pineapple. And what you have is a little scrap in your kit, a little scrap of white. Um, and that's what you're going to use to stamp your pineapple on. So, you guys, when you look in the, the catalog for this guy, it's the very first one. <laughs> it's called Island Vibe. It's free with a $50 purchase. 
Okay, so let's see what we got. We used thick white for the base. It's all about the base. And um, it's scored at four and a quarter, eight and a half by five and a half. And then make sure you, April 4th. Thanks, Pam. I couldn't remember the exact date. I wanted to, if I had to guess, I would have guessed the 10th of April, but April 4th is better. <laughs> all right, so you have this and now you have a mat on the outside. When I, yeah, Barbara, you're good too. April 4th, good memories. So when I use thick white or thick vanilla, I don't generally put a mat on the inside because it's white and vanilla. If I have any other color card base color, I will always put a mat, regardless if it's pale papaya or pink or like a light color. It just completes it. This one, you could have put an old olive mat and then put another piece of white over the top if you, because I know there are people that love the double matting, especially Diane Bogenhagen. So you could double mat, but this old olive goes on the outside. It's your traditional four by five and a quarter. And then in your kit, you're gonna have some linen thread. You're gonna have some frayed white ribbon. You're going to have a piece of designer paper. So this, you guys, it's the daffodils. Yay, got to use up some bumblebee. So this, I have it cut for you guys, but I wanna show you how to cut it, right? So it starts off by five by three and three quarter. And in a second, I'll show you how to cut it, how I got it cut for you. This little die comes from the scalloped contour dies. Yay. It's super cool because it has this slice right here. So that's awesome. If you do want to take ribbon and weave it through it like this, you could do that. It's so cool. Um, a cool concept. You run the ribbon through like that and we could do it with this one um, or we could put our ribbon behind. So that's awesome. That is intentional. There is, um, you have your thanks and then you have another thanks. One's bumblebee and one is Old Olive. And then lastly in your kit, you guys have a piece of white that is about like that, and it's for your pineapple. So we're gonna do the cutting here real quick. So in, in the PDF tutorial, I hope I, tr I tried to explain it. <laughs> I don't remember how I explained it. Um, I think I put I think I like I try to put, you know, cut at so and so on the so and so side, right? So the first thing you want to do is you want this is three and three quarter. And just know that this is one inch over here. So either cut one inch from this side or cut two and three quarters from this side. So I'm gonna cut at two and three quarters, which is here, which is cutting off the one inch. So that's the first line right here. And then you have these two pieces. And now what happens is they each need to get cut one at one inch here, and then one at one and a half, okay? So at one inch here, so one inch, so that's this part, and then this is either three and a half or one and a half, whichever, it doesn't matter. You either come from one side or you go from the other side. So it's three and a half, and that's how that got cut. So when my mom and I are kidding these up, I don't cut these until we're right ready to put them on and one by one I cut them all and I put them on your kits. <laughs> so that's how that gets cut. So it's cut at the one inch here, one inch here, and then one and a half from that side. And now that you have that, there's no reason why we can't flip these over and adhere them. And I would, I guess it really doesn't matter which one you start with, but I'm gonna put adhesive on these two to begin with and we flip that back over and there's not a lot of wiggle room something like that and then let's get this guy on because then if we need to we can wiggle it a little bit but that looks good to me and then these two next oops i'm gluing the countertop here hmm Paper towel. I'm like, do I wipe that on my pants or not? Nope, it's glue. Glue doesn't come out of clothes so good. Okay, so there's that one there. And then that guy. Okay, that's what we call the DSP blocking. Deb Norman saw somebody do it. Somebody saw somebody do it. <laughs> Look at the back. I know the back is really pretty. It is, but it's not all about daffodils right now. So we got to cover it up. I can't remember, um, Deb Norman gave credit to whoever did it, but 
people have been doing this DSP blocking for, for many, many moons. So now this goes on here and you could do this card vertical. You could do it horizontal. If I'm not, if you guys give me 20 seconds, I'm gonna show you Deb's card because I have it here. I just, I just came across this the other day. This was my birthday card from Deb. And so this is what she made for me. And this is where the inspiration came to me to make this card. So, um, and she put a nice little sentiment on there. And then the DSP. So this is the tulip. So this was the beautiful card Deb sent me that, and that triggered it. So Karen Titus did it. Thanks, Penny Powell. Yep. So very cool. And then we have, let's Stella the thanks. It's better to Stella this right away than to try to do it while it's on the green. So we're going to get this Stella. And buying time for the pineapple. <laughs> Not like the pineapple's hard. It's just a little tricky. Okay, so that's Stellad. And then you guys will potentially have to poke out the insides of those if they need it. Ah, oh, it is frozen. Good call. Okay. I was very hopeful that um, we wouldn't have the issue, but we did. Thanks. Somebody said it right away. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to unconnect from it. And we're going to do that really quick because I see my flyaways sticking everywhere. <laughs> Did you do that to your kids? Uh, 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 uh. So I'm going to connect the phone back up. I gave it a few seconds. Gave you some entertainment for a moment. <laughs> we're going to see if that did the trick. I could have sworn we were doing so good, you guys. We made it a whole hour without having technology issues. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to disconnect it and we're going to just re-log in. I figured out that is a trick that just works so good so let's get that connected and see if we're still in business I'm still recording so I'm hoping that 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 does our trick so hang tight you guys or see if see if we got her back in action okay it looks like I might be okay all right so I'm not quite sure where or where or where. It's still like way back frozen like many moons ago. So, oh, there it is. Ha ha, you guys saw me do my hand pet thing with my, <laughs> oh, I just, do you guys, I get these flyaways right here. They just annoy me. And it's like, they're always short little hairs that never want to grow. They're like, they're stunted or something. <laughs> so I hope it's good. Oh, it's still doing it. Oh, I know it's good. So I'm trying to buy myself time, make sure it's good. And then we're going to flip down. Do a hand check, all good in the hood. Okay, okay, so we're gonna do a little gluing now that I bought that some time to dry. All right, so flip this over and don't worry about having to glue it all, but we're just going to put little bits of liquid glue in little spots around here. Don't have to have glue everywhere. This is the perfect kind of dye that if you had those adhesive sticker sheets, it would be perfect to put them on before you die cut them. But I don't do that for all of these kits. Okay, but they are great to have if you wanna reproduce. Okay, looks like you guys were not frozen anymore. So hopefully we're back. We got this figured out. So I can't tell you why it happens. I thought that updating my version would make, you know, everything happy. So I am gonna do, I'm gonna do this little tail right here so that that goes down and get a little teeny tiny. You don't need a lot, you guys. This green liquid glue is amazing. It's craft glue. Um, I would never use that blue bottle glue that is clear because that is water-based and it warps your, your paper products where the craft glue is, it's really tacky and it's not water, so watery. So there's that. Now, what I would do for this is pop it up with dimensionals. So that's where some of these little dimensionals come in really handy and find some spots that the little ones fit. But then what you're gonna need to do is you're going to move on to some strips here. And that might even be too wide. You guys, don't be afraid to cut your dimensionals to the size that you need them. I should have cut that while I was on the paper, but <laughs> of course I took it off. Um, so that's gonna go here. 
and this little bit can go right there. You don't have to pop up everything either, just some key spots. So I feel like one could go there. And then I want a teensy little guy right there, okay? So we're going to go ahead, pick those off, and that can go onto our scalloped contour die at a little bit of an angle. So grab this guy. And time to get ready for work. All right, Feline, have a good night of work. We'll catch you later, girl. So this goes slightly at an angle like that. Okay, perfect. Then <laughs> let's do some stamping. Yo, so the, by the magic of TV, you guys, I really, I already have my pineapple done. But I am going to show you how you should create this beautiful pineapple because uh, I just, I have a hard time with, stamps that, you know, they're two, you want two colors on them, right? I wish that, I mean, it would be awesome if they made this in photopolymer and made the top one color and the bottom, or so one stamp and the other stamp, right? That would be amazing. Wouldn't it? I'm not going to lose this guy. That would be amazing, but they didn't do that. So how I do this is I take my lighter color ink first and I put that on my stamp. You have to be careful not to get it up past where the green is and I want to use my ink pad because it just inks up the stamp so much better you kind of got to eyeball I'm you, you guys I know the angle is really bad but you can see where the ink is now I got right to about there so good let that's gonna sit really patiently you have two options now you can either take a marker a water-based marker and color the top or if you're careful you flip it around and you do the other side. And you can see where the ink is right there. And so you gotta just keep working and wiggle wiggling your way. And then if you get to the end here and you're like, I don't wanna risk it, just take the marker that is the same ink color and fill that little area in and then you don't have to worry about it. So you gotta not be afraid to ink your stamped image up or your image with two different ink colors. And that I don't use water-based markers a lot. I'll be honest with you guys. You see me use blends more than anything, but this is where water-based markers really come in handy because you can color the backs of your stamps with them to ink up your image. And so that's how you would get that. So if um, I did this Timeless Tropical class back in July of last year. So afterwards then what we did is we wrapped linen thread um, around that kind of helped um, create the buffer between the two colors. So Lila said, use a sponge on the green. It worked pretty well. Perfect. Yeah. Hi, Ethel King. So that's it for um, the this dude. So let's stamp him so he's ready to clean in a second. Now the inside though, as long as we have the old olive open, we're going to, I'm trying to use this thing. <laughs> there we go. So open up your card. And I would put a piece of scratch paper down underneath here and then ink this up with the old olive. And just make sure you get down far enough because you want it like to be growing out of the bottom, right? If you have it up too high, you're going to see a white margin and I don't want to see a white margin. So I'm just going to make sure I go down low enough and I'm over so that it kind of comes right out of the bottom. Ian said a sponge dauber works too. Oh yes, very good. A sponge dauber works too. Okay, so now you've got your inside that's stamped. Very good. Okay, um, that's good. Let's shut up our ink. So we're done with our inky dinky doos. Uh, by the magic of TV, you guys, I've already cut out my pineapple. Um, you will need to take your scissors. It's called fussy cutting because you have to fussily cut around the edges. And I have mine done already, yay. Okay, <laughs> that's why they call it magical TV. All right, so let's put the rest of this together then. There's this, and you guys have 12 inches, which I had heard in class last night, it was way more than enough. I People were giving me back three and two and four inch sections. So it depends on how conservative you wanna be with your ribbon. I'm gonna teach you a way to be conservative because then you could always use this for something else. This white ribbon comes on a roll and it's only five yards. It's super cool. It's what we've been using for fraying, right? 
but you only get five yards because it's so, I think, intense. <laughs> so how I would do this is I would line up the back with some tear and tape. And finding the end of that roll is always the hardest thing. But you're going to put tear and tape along the top. And I don't want to waste that, so I'm just going to put it there. And then I probably cut that one too long, but that's okay. I'll put that one on there as well. So I'm going to show you the very conservative way to do this because being conservative with your products is always a good thing. It makes them last a little longer. Now, somebody else might show you how to waste yours so that you buy more, but <laughs> I don't like to waste. So this is how I would do it. So I would actually cut myself at an angle here. I won't cut myself, but I'd cut my ribbon at an angle and just use a little end like this. And then I'm going to flip it that way and I'm going to attach it, right? And then I've got this. There's probably enough here to do two, actually. So let's see here. So I've got that little other end cut. I'm going to cut that and see once what I've got. This end can go down here and I've got it facing this way. So do you see what I did is I just didn't use ribbon right there. So I saved that, okay? Now with this one, I'm going to cut it at an angle and I'm gonna save that. Oh, I'm gonna use it right now actually. We're gonna put that guy. You guys, this is where it's up to you how you wanna do it. If you want them all mismatched, do you want them all the same? Do you don't wanna do this technique like I'm doing and you wanna use more ribbon, go for it. However you want to. I gave everybody 12 inches, which or 11, I can't remember. My mom, in class the other night, everybody's like, you gave us way too much. And so if you have extra and you wanna save it for a different project, you definitely can. So there's that one coming out. And then now that's cut at an angle already. So now I'm just gonna put that angle right there. And then now I've got it attached. You guys, I'm working right over my tear and tape. We're gonna put cut that off really short. And then you've got one more little dude coming out right here. And we'll cut him like that. So you see what I did? I didn't waste one inch, two inch, three inch, and how much left over. That's enough to do um, like two thirds of another one. So extra ribbon is good. Yay. Okay. So plenty of ribbon on that card for you guys. Now, this now what I would do is I would secure this with, ha, I'm glad, Cindy. Oh, I, I try to teach you guys ways to be conservative too, because you know what? Stuff costs money. It's not like we have money growing on trees around here, do we? I don't. <laughs> so, oh, I wish I did. If there was a money tree, that would be awesome. Okay, so I'm actually, these ribbons are thick, right? And by the time you add um, the tape to them, I'm actually just going to peel them off because they will be about the same height as if the dimensionals, as the dimensionals are. So this whole conglomerate of action stuff here, that can go right on our card. Like, I've got it right about here. I'm not gonna press it down, okay? Just set it there, you guys. Don't get so happy that you wanna like squish it down good right away, just set it there. So now the pineapple though. I want a pina colada, I love it, me too. If you like pina coladas, I'm getting caught in the rain. If you're into yoga and something else and something else, tear and tape on the back. And <laughs> this is how I would do it, you guys. I would put my tail in the back and I'm just going, I'm not good with rat's nests. I like good looking rat's nests. And so I'm not good. I like, <laughs> I like it to be good. <laughs> so I'm going to keep rolling around in a circle and then eventually I'm going to make a little, a smaller loop. And then I'm gonna make a bigger loop. And then, a, like, I'm just making loops, guys. That's all it is. And then I think we gave you, I wrote it down on my note card here, 14 inches or 12 inches. I don't remember. I try to make notes. 12 in, uh, 14 inches of linen thread is what we tried to do for this one. And then, um, get in there, little guy. So you're getting to the end, and you're, you want your tail to end behind. So, I wouldn't, I'm just gonna put that tail right there. And so you, now you can finagle if you feel like, oh, it should be not so rounded. You could pull one down. Um, you gotta just massage it, okay? So that's how I did my little loop-de-loops. That's about it. 
you want a little bit bigger of a loop-de-loop, -loop, there was a little bit left. You could have made a couple of them slightly bigger. So what do we do though? We need to put tear and tape. He, Holly loves all the fun things. Oh, I know you guys. So somebody told me that ribbon was going out of style and they don't see it on cards anymore. And I'm like, no, I don't believe it. It can't be true. Can't be true. So I'm going to peel these off actually. And I'm going to pop my dimensionals right on it. So when you look at this pineapple, the top, I popped it up twice with a double stack Oreo. And then the bottom is a double stack way at the bottom as well. And then the side here. So this side, I did a double. And then on the right side, I did a single. Because this right side slightly hangs over. Well, let's get that picked off. It slightly hangs over the label. So I didn't put dimensionals on my T. So now I should be able to, oh, I might have. You just got to kind of sneak this in here so that your pineapple, okay, hang tight. We're gonna pull this little guy up slightly, just a little bit, and then our ribbon will kind of go right there. The T goes slightly over the pineapple, and can finagle our ribbon a little bit. Get that right like that. Now, okay, so far so good. Now my T is a little loose. So what I am actually gonna do is put I haven't tried to color the frayed ribbon, Kathy. I'll be honest with you. If you did it, it would suck a lot of color <laughs> because that fray ribbon is so thick. And cottony, um, I think it would um, suck the color out of your marker. So um, let us know how it works for you, though. <laughs> so if you do try it, <laughs> if you have the ribbon. So you guys, you saw what happened there is I kind of like lifted my tea up and now I put a little glue behind it and I'm going to get it to stick to my pineapple there. And... Sometimes I do think, because I don't know how things are going to situate. Like, you might have tried to put your pineapple down and then did that. I kind of worked that way with it. And I think it still turned out pretty darn good that way. All right. Now, go ahead and squish it down good. I know that if you wanted to move it over slightly, it wouldn't work so good if you squished it down. Now, the faux sea glass shapes are in your kit, you guys. They are little buggers. Um... They flip and flop all over the place. And so, oh, uh, they are, they just, they flick around. And so they're going to be really hard to see. These white ones are so clear. It's really hard to see. There's lots of different shapes. So the, I, the white ones, I can't remember if I gave you guys like, there's five. I'm pretty sure I gave everybody five. It was really hard to cut these. They kept flipping all around. Um, they were a pain in the butt, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> they're fun to use, but not to have to cut apart. And so we're going to put another white one somewhere. We're going to put it right, I don't know, right there, I guess. <laughs> okay, so these faux sea glass shapes are old olive, like a just jade-ish color, and then um, like frosty white. And so we got it done, you guys. That's our island vibes. Hopefully it puts you in the spirit of wanting to go travel somewhere south if you're not <laughs> somewhere south right now already <laughs> and have your pina colada on the beach, right? All right. So, boom. <laughs> we got another one done. Does it feel like we made so many cards all week today or all week this week? Okay, so this needs to go here. I always like for... Um, the reason I took a scratch paper so that people didn't have to take my cards out of the plastic to see the inside. That's how I do that. All right. So we got two done. Nice. Let's put these out of the way. We're going to clean our stamps. We're going to reassess our situation here before we go on to our second card. Third card. Oh my gosh, we're cruising right along. Okay. Got to get in all those little nooks and crannies. And then this guy. Clean him up good. I'm gonna have to retire these stamps pretty soon. Okay, so this one's done. These are done. This is done. That's done. All right. Let's grab the next one. Hmm. I don't know. Which card is this? <laughs> Oh, it's this one. Okay. All right, cool. I was like, is it Herbie? Nope, we're saving Herbie Lovebug for last, you guys. How's that sound? Okay. 
So you guys need a couple markers for this one. Um, if you don't have these exact markers, you need something for coloring. And we've got some stamps for this. And this one pulls in the iridescent rhinestones. If you guys were wondering where that thinking of you on your special day, that came from Inspired Thoughts. And then this card uses the Hello, no, I wanna say Hello Friendly, it's Friendly Hello, and this has the designer paper that goes with it. So pulled in a bunch of these stamps. So this is the card and Let's grab your card kit. See what you all have in it. I had a 1970 and then I sold it and got a 69. I went a year older. <laughs> oh, I went from a lime green one to um, a champagne colored one that came from Daytona Beach, Florida. Somebody was down on the beach and he's like, I want it and he bought it and he brought it back up here. He hardly used it. And then I ended up buying it from him. <laughs> so, all right. Found a face. It was an ad on Craigslist, I think. Um, that's how that goes. <laughs> all right. So this is our card. I pulled in the Hippo and Friends dies. And then this is the Bark Embossing Folder. And so we've got Basic Gray, Pool Party, and Fresh Freesia. So fresh. I love the color combination on this. So you have your Basic Gray eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter donna loves the vintage cars oh and studebaker is very nice yep i've always loved herbie love bugs i have a product of the 80s and i grew up with kevin bacon and footloose <laughs> i definitely love the old <laughs> version of footloose <laughs> he made he makes a girl go ham right <laughs> so all right you got your two bases or two mats here are the same size four by five and a quarter and this one is with the bark embossing folder. If you wonder if there's a top and a bottom, you guys, not really. Just whichever side you like better. They're pretty you're interchangeable. Um, let's just glue this one right away. There's nothing holding us back from gluing this one. And when it's an uh, embossed piece like this that's really rumbly, I generally put a little bit more on there. Okay, so let's get that glued. It just gets centered right on your card top right there boom that's it okay so we'll stamp a little bit here this fresh freesia piece goes here you guys will have to stamp our birds the word on here um you'll have a scrap that's like a half inch i heard in class the other night that i made them really really small <laughs> so you're gonna have to be really strategic about your stamping <laughs> depending on what sentiment you use um so i gave everybody i think we did eight inches and so Eight inches is enough to do this. You guys, this is my other ribbon conservation at its finest. Okay, so I'm going to tell you how to do this eight inches because you will not fit it around and tie it into a knot in the front. That is not what you do. Okay, so hang tight. I will show you what we do when we get that far. But I wanted to show you how this starts off. So this designer paper is all florally like flowers, birds, stuff. And it started, everybody started off as a three by three square. And that's how I cut them first upstairs when I was cutting paper. And then what happened is I came down and we kitted them. And as right before I kitted them with my mom, we had, I cut them down to one by one inch. And I looked to make sure whoever, sometimes you got a bird, sometimes you didn't get a bird. So like here I got a bird tail. Some people got bird butt. <laughs> like they just got the butt. Um, so if you don't like just a bird butt showing, be strategic about how you place it on your card, and we'll go over that. Um, your parents had a v old VW and a VR, VW camper. Yeah, I know. So, Patsy, if you want to buy mine, I'm going to put it up for sale next month or the month after. So, um, it's it's pristine. Um, somebody did some work on it, and it runs, and it's beautiful, and everything's done. It's just, it's a nice car. I just, <laughs> you don't need two cars. All right, so it's three by three, and so... There's no real pattern, unless some of you had a bird, then I tried to make sure your bird was up and down. Um, so you want just to cut one inch. So if you're doing this at home, I started off as a three by three, and then I cut it down to one inch and one inch. Okay, now in your kit, you're gonna have these three strips of paper and they might have gotten out of order. Just know there is a pattern to them. And so like right now I'm like, oh, I forgot how I cut it. You're gonna have to put them on your paper and play with them because 
if it doesn't make sense with the pattern, just know you don't have them in the right order. And you don't have much opportunity for changing them. So you're just gonna have to play around and like, okay, well, does that look right? Um, no, that's not right either. But those two are right. And so now I'm gonna try this one up here and be like, put them back into order and you can see that the pattern flows, okay? But what's gonna happen is you're gonna glue them apart like that, like panels, okay? That's my trick, you guys. Make sure you put your puzzle back together. You only have three pieces to deal with, okay? I think you got it. But now when you glue them, you have to be very careful. So I'm gonna flip, I'm gonna flip, and I'm gonna flip. And my goal is to try to remember to flip them back. And so I glue my top and my bottom, and then my middle, last. So either top or bottom, and your margin on the left and the right and the bottom should be the same. And then I'm gonna flip. And the reason I did the top and the bottom, because now I'm just gonna center the middle. And because I'm using glue, the liquid glue, I can wiggle wiggle with it a little bit. All right, then this should get put right in the middle and just center now and it should come out good. Oh, Kathy Jackson had a 49, wow. That's old too. So my car is a 69. It just hit turned 50 a couple years ago. All right. So you have this done. Now what you're going to do is grab your tear and tape. <laughs> I'm so happy. I just looked at the last kit, you guys. The last kit is the, um, the VW card that we're talking about. And it has gray granite shimmer ribbon on it. <laughs> and I just thought to myself, oh, I wonder if there's gray ribbon for that card. And you know what? I put it in there. I'm so excited right now. Okay, so this goes either this way or this way. I personally, I intended to go that way, but if you guys wanna change up the card any which way, you can. But know that you wanna put the tear and tape on the back side closer to the bottom. And what you're gonna do is look at it from the front and you're gonna flip your tail, the one tail over and then what you can do is you're gonna cut off a little bit, save that. That's what you need for the front. So this is, you guys, another tr another trick for saving ribbon. I mean, I'd rather use tear and tape than more ribbon. <laughs> so now you're gonna just put a couple little more tear and tapes right over the top. Don't pick these off though. Leave these on because we're gonna pop this piece up. All right, so now we didn't put ribbon all the way on the back here. And you're gonna save that to put on the front. So now we can pop this up with dimensionals. I usually use maybe nine or six or eight on something this size. And then two in the middle here. So we don't have our saggy middle syndrome. So Patsy wanted a lot. Yeah, so I, I wanted one too. I always dreamt of having a VW, like from a little girl on. And I finally bought one. <laughs> I got a good deal on it. Um, but it, it needed a lot of work and a lot of love. And I didn't have the time. I had the love, but I didn't have the time or the money that I wanted to put into it. And I, I sold it. And I bought a different one that had all the work done on it already. So there, that's what we got so far, you guys. All right. So don't worry about this little strip of ribbon. We're going to do some stamping. But we got that pretty much put together. And we're going to go ahead. We need our basic gray ink again. So that's why I left that here. And we're going to go ahead and do our little bit of stamping. So this is a photopolymer set. So you are going to need your piercing mat here. And that will help put a little cushion for our cushion. <laughs> so you're going to grab that little bird stamp. Bird, bird, bird. Bird is the word. And you're going to stamp him however you like. If you don't have this set, pick something else. And it is in basic gray though. So that gets stamped like that. And then the sentiment, it's from this set as well. It says, hope you have the best birthday. And that will get stamped. So this is where there's not a little wiggle room, you guys. Um, you gotta kind of line it up good and then just go for it and hope you, it turns out for the best. <laughs> if it doesn't, flip it over. So those are two things. And then you also have some flowers down here. And this is what I've got going on. So we've got that, this double 
treble flower set. And what I'm gonna do, just line up a scratch paper here, and we're gonna stamp these flowers in the bottom left corner, like this. And then we're gonna use the leaf. And I wanna show you a trick, a trickery with this leaf. So if you can see when I stamped here, I didn't, so there's a, there's a point on the leaf. Like it comes to a little point. What I did is when I inked this up, I didn't ink up that pointy part. I inked up right up to it, okay? And then when I went to stamp, I could tuck my leaf in there could tuck my leaf so it looks like it got masked and it's tucked behind the petal. Okay, so now I'm gonna do that again. So I just did a 360 with this. So ink up, up to that little peaky part, like hold it back just a second. And because it's photopolymer, you can easily see that. And then now I'm gonna do the same concept in here. I'm going to make it look like my leaf is coming out the flower right there. I'm going to do a couple more. This one, I'm going to wait, I'm going to put this one all the way in there. I'm thinking about putting one right there. So I'm going to ink this up again, but don't go all the way to the peak. Bring it in to right about there. And now I've got that little leaf there. And now for this last one, I think, I think he'll fit in there really good. So we're just going to squeeze it right in there. And then we've got a leaf. Okay. But I hope that that was a ha ha ha, -ha for some of you guys how to mask and make it look like it's coming out from underneath. That's for the leaf action. Now, if you guys want to color this, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> I don't generally take a lot of time to color the innards of my cards, especially my class cards, because I'm like, somebody else can have that fun and enjoyment, right? So I do color the outsides though. So we're going to get rid of our piercing mat because I don't like to color on that. I color right onto a piece of paper. Uh, let's look at the front side here again. The end of this, we might as well just banner the end. You can banner it, angle it however you want. I just took a scissors. I snipped it at an angle like that. So that was ready. And then coloring. So the colors that we have are freesia. We used the freesia last night. Remember, you guys, I had to go run to the table. <laughs> I had to run to the table and get them out of the bin. So we, I'm doing dark near the center of both of the flowers, the dark freesia. And then I'm gonna finish up with the, uh, I need to know how much you want for as long as, as, uh, as long as you buy it. <laughs> um, I have to figure that out because I definitely know I put some work into it. Like it needed to get like the carburetor cleaned and it needed some work. I need to figure out all that. But um, Patsy, you're down in, trying to remember what state you're in. I just remember shipping your kits and I don't, you guys, I don't always remember off the top of my head, but it would be a drive because I feel like you're in Texas and, or Florida, <laughs> but Wendy's in Florida. And I know that's fresh in my mind. <laughs> I generally remember where you guys are from, but not always on a whim's notice. <laughs> so, all right. So that was the light and the dark. And then I pulled in some granny, the granny, either dark or light, whichever you want. And I did color over the top of the gray and did my veins really nice here over that. And then the branch, I did the branch in green. You, okay. I mean, now that I look at it, I'm like, well, maybe the branch shouldn't have been green. It sh could have been gray. Let's do gray. I do have gray here for some reason. So let's, I must, I have light smoky slate. Let's, let's live on the edge and just color our branch gray instead of green. <laughs> Oh, just because a branch to me is more dark than it is green. Okay, that works good. And then I pulled in a little yellow. And oh, Patsy, Oklahoma, but staying in Texas. See, okay, that's right. See, I wasn't so far off. Okay, cool. So a little yellow in the inside, yellow in the inside. And then I've got the pool party going on. I did the dark pool party along this foliage. His, <laughs> it's not foliage, <laughs> his back here. All right, and then I followed up with the light pool party over everything. Okay, so when I do my blend, don't do don't, don't color his eye blue though. I wouldn't if you can avoid it. Don't do his eye. Um, otherwise, you give him a case of the blue eye. And 
Just make sure you color nice brush strokes, nice and even. And we got ourselves a little bluebird, you guys. A little bluebird. And now let's finish our final assembly. So um, I think that my inside is here and that gets glue. And this, I'm gonna show you guys. We just did this on the other card. This side has popped up, this side is flat. Okay, so I'm only gonna put dimensionals to the point where it's gonna hit the edge of the freesia. So I'm putting three dimensionals, right? So, and then liquid glue. I'm getting to the end of my bottle, guys. <laughs> it's making me work for it. Okay, so then this one's gonna go, so dimensionals only on that side. It partly covers up the ribbon. See what I got going on here, a little here, a little there, little ribbon exposed, glued it flat here. I had my glue bottle open, I should have glued this right away. All right, and that's gonna go on our inside. I love, I don't, I don't know where I came up with this. Well, you know what? When you have designer series paper and it tells you what colors are in the designer series paper, that's how you end up with using the colors. And then I just added basic gray. I'm like, wow, it was so cool. This little strip then, you guys, don't worry. I didn't put a lot of glue right there. You guys probably think I do things backwards if I think about it. <laughs> um, I'm gonna put a dimensional here. I'm gonna put, I'm not gonna worry about that at all, actually. I'm gonna put a little liquid glue and this is going to get lifted up and it gets tucked right like that. You see that? It kind of ended up being straight even. Now, depending on what sentiment you guys use, you know, that may or may not work for you because if you used a longer sentiment, because I gave you a longer strip, it might not work so good for you. And then this right here is actually fake, right? So that's about what it is. And for some reason I had one already done. I must've done an extra one. So all you do, I'll try to undo this so that you can see the whole thing start to finish. Um, so it's just your extra little tail that you cut off. So right, you start with you start with a piece like this and all you do is you tie a knot. <laughs> so just to show you how I did that, that's how I did that. And then you're gonna get yourself a glue dot. So it's not even wrapped around. That glue dot now goes right where that corner is, right there. And you're gonna put this on to make it look like it came around and got tied right there, okay? That's how I did that. Squish it down good. And then you're gonna take your scissors and you can trim off the tail there and then the tail here. There, all right. So we didn't really wrap the ribbon and tie it like that, but it makes it look like you did and you use the last ribbon in the process. And this one uses the iridescent rhinestones, which are my favorite. They are in the new mini catalog. I feel like there's, maybe, maybe not. Oh, yep, there they are. Okay, I knew that there were some big ones in there, some big ones. So you guys got a big and a small and a medium, or you got a small, two smalls and a medium. I don't exactly remember how I cut it, but there's enough for you guys to put three little gems on your card. And so when you pull the gems in, they match the Frieza, Frieza and the pool party so nicely. And then that, you can see up close now how that makes it look like it's wrapped around and then tied in a knot, but it isn't. So um, be careful with your sentiment, depending on what you use. You may need to put this up higher and you could pull the sentiment down lower. Um, but all in all, that's what we got. I don't know what that is, but let's see if it comes off. So, oh yeah, came right off. Perfect. So the last card also uses these gems. So we are going to set them right here so we have them ready. And let's see here, this needs to go in here. The colors are so suit. You guys, I don't know about if you feel the same way, but I, when I look at this card, it soothes me. There's such softness to it and it just looks happy. <laughs> That's why I love it so much. All right, extra bits and parts. Oh, yay. Okay, so put these away and we'll clean up our mess. We got three cards done. And we'll get these guys cleaned. I generally try to use that side, so let's flip over. Cleany, 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 washy, washy, washy. 
squeaky, squeaky, squeaky. So the next card then, we'll use a bunch of these markers as well. So, but not freesia, not papaya, but I think all of those. So let's move all this out of town here. Make room for the last one. Someone's got a lot going on, you guys. I don't know if I saved my favorite for last, but I definitely like this card a lot. <laughs> so, gotta keep it hydrated. All right. So, lots of markers because we gotta call her Herbie Lovebug. So, this one we mentioned is called Driving By. Okay. So, we got the Herbie Lovebug and Driving By to say hi. That's where these two came from. That is the celebration product along with the designer series paper. And so, <laughs> the grease, yeah. <laughs> um, these two cards are what you got a choice. You didn't get a choice. You either got one or the other. So this pack of paper is free with celebration during celebration with a fifty dollar order. And I tried to design the card so that because I, you guys, I had forty. Basically, there's forty cards, so I needed a full sheet almost. This is um, five and a, like a sixteenth by six inches. Okay, so it uses almost a full sheet of paper. So you either got that one or you got that one, but they are pretty interchangeable, right? So just so you know, not that you're confused if you have this one and I'm making this one and, or vice versa, right? Um, so just so you are aware of what's going on with that. When you look at the card, so you got the Herbie Love Bug driving by, but we have here a set called In The Moment. <laughs> There's a stamp here that has some birds on it. <laughs> And those birds are actually part of that stamp, but I didn't want the have to mask. And so you guys, what I did, I actually cut, I actually cut the birds off of her head here. <laughs> so they, those are the birds right there. That's where they come from. So if you don't have a bird stamp, you can make your own birds. Watch, I'll show you really quick, just so I don't forget to do this. But if you don't have um, a stamp, you can make, like take a black marker and so you can draw, like, you can, that's all that that kind of is. You could draw your own birds, right? <laughs> Better than that. But just to be creative, you don't have to have bird stamps if you don't want to. But just so you guys know, that's where they came from. Then I have tulip fields. That's where I pulled clouds from. So there are some clouds. You don't have to put them either if you don't want to. But the other thing is the sun. So I feel bad. I pulled in a whole lot of stamp sets for this one card, but they are all things that if you don't have paradise palms, you might have a circle somewhere else along the way or a sponge dauber and you can, and we also showed you in the past taking a circle, punching it out and then um, shading it in with a sponge dauber. So that's where all this other stuff came from. The paper is the only thing I didn't get in celebration. I, oh no, Penny, you didn't get this paper? That blows my mind. That was one of the first papers I got because it's all about sunshine and happiness and it's awesome. <laughs> you still have time, Penny. <laughs> no, no pressure though. Okay, so we've got all of our stamps we're gonna pull out. I did pull out the happy birthday too from Paradise Palms. It has a really cool happy birthday here. So that's where all the stamping is coming from in case you guys are wondering. So let's pull our kit to see what you guys have here. <laughs> All right, I'm so happy with myself that I try to put the ribbon in with the kits. I generally do, unless it's ink, paper, scissors, then I don't. All right, so what do you have? We've got two bottoms here. <laughs> this is a regular quarter sheet, and then this is slightly bigger. It's like four and a sixteenth by five and a five and five sixteenths, maybe. It's just slightly smaller than the coastal. Um, you went with two daffodil papers and said, well, that's a smart decision too, Penny. The daffodil paper is hands down like... I love it. It's so cool. So pretty. Um, hi, Rose from Windsor, Ontario. I hope all is good with you, Rose. Um, so that's what we got for our, our two mats here. All you have to do with these guys, isn't that funny? Do you always do that too? Even though there's nothing on the other side, you still flip it over and glue the other side. Why do we do that? That is one of the most hilarious things that I've never figured out. They're ultimately the same. <laughs> so... Instinct. That's all I can say. Instinct. So you're just gonna go, going to glue this mat onto here. And I'm going to just wiggle it a little bit. And that's what we got. Now, here's our designer paper. This is the bread and butter. Well, Herbie's a lot too, but this is the awesome part about this card, you guys. If you have 
the designer paper that you want to showcase off. This is the perfect for it. So it's scored, so this is six inches and it's scored at four, right? So, and then this is two inches. So what you do then, take your bone folder and burnish it. And we're going to glue this side. Guys, I'm getting down to the end. When you think you're done though, you can still get like 20 more cards, I promise. <laughs> The struggle becomes real, but you can do it. I believe in you. And um, <laughs> that is our inside now. See, that's how we got going on. And then you've got some other things going here. You have another piece of that needs to get scored here. And I believe that, mm, let's see, I'll tell you a little measurement going on. The Melon Mambo is three and five eighths by four five and three quarters scored at two and seven eighths inch. Okay. And that's, you've got to have your fold on the right and then that's going to go like this. Okay. So I'm going to go for it and get glue happy and just get it glued in here. See, look at that. <laughs> I got lots more glue in here. And so I'm just going to, I, I, I like to look at the front while I do this. So I'm going to put that where I think, and then I can wiggle this now to get it where I want over here. I want to see some more designer paper on that side. And then I'm trying to center it top to bottom. And I'm looking at my line of hearts there to make sure it doesn't look all weird and wonky on me. I'm gonna put it right there. Okay. Now you guys, I don't want you to be confused because this happened in class that a couple times the papers got mixed up. These are not the same size, okay? The smaller one is matted on the Coastal Cabana, which goes on the front. And then the larger one is for the inside and it's not double matted on the inside. So just so you know that, they are both different, okay? So let's get to our stamping. We got pretty much our whole base done here. So let's go ahead and stamp. And they are kinda similar, but they are still a little different. So my advice for you, so you don't get confused, is what people did in class the other night is they put the Coastal Cabana on one side and then they kept that, that they knew that there was that outside and then this was their inside. So, Herbie, here's my advice for you on Herbie. Wondering why you score at two and seven eighths rather than three. Um, because the paper wasn't six inches. If the paper would have been six inches, I would have scored it at three, but I made the paper five and three quarters inches and half of five and three quarters is two and seven eighths. If you wanted to make this six inches, then you could score it at three. Um, I guess I cased a card and the card that I cased had this at five and three quarters and scored at two and seven eighths. And so that's why I did that. If you would have added another eighth of an inch, no, let's say qu three quarters of an inch, it would have been wider here and wider here, and it would have shown less designer paper. So I went with that because I liked that layout. So yeah, so you could, in essence, make this six and score it at three, and life is good too. It's honestly, it's, it's a horse of piece. I just want to make sure whatever distance this is, you score it in the middle, okay? Otherwise, it's going to be longer on one side than the other, but no one would probably ever know that because you're never really going to put it like that. So good question. Um, so you've got your smaller white for the outside and the larger for the inside. And my advice to you with Herbie is you need to stamp him. So if you caught what I did here, I tried to make it look like my gray granite shimmer ribbon was the road, right? And I tried to make it look like it was a two lane highway. <laughs> um, okay. So that was my method to my madness. And so to make the two lane highway, you can't stamp Herbie down here because he will be not, he'll, the road, well, you don't have room, rude, rude, blah, blah, room for the road. That was a lot of words there. Um, so I recommended to people on Wednesday night that you have to be about a finger width away. Okay, so we're going to ink up Herbie. Nice and good and finger width away. And if he gets a little crooked, it's okay. He's either going up a hill or down a hill. <laughs> it doesn't matter. All right. 
And my memento, I really let it marinate for a long time because I really want it to have a nice crisp image. Okay, so don't worry if you're too low. What if you're lower, your your two lines aren't your two. So if you look at the ribbon here, I'll try to show it to you close up. I have a little, you can see there's a, a little line where it overlaps. So if you want to stamp it up, oh, I can't stamp on it. Mine, I've got something on the back here. <laughs> I printed that. So that's where it's going to stay. So on the inside here, I've got happy birthday. So I've got my black ink open. So I'm going to go right for my happy birthday. And stamp that right there. Hope it's straight. Cross the fingers and the toes. And it's good. So that's it for the basic, or the memento. And then we'll do the sun next. Let's get our yellow. Oh, you know, we're not done, you guys. Ha ha. <laughs> Here I thought we were done with the black, but we got to stamp our driving by thing. So now that we kind of know which one's the front, I've got the driving by up in the sky. Oh, man, we're going to practice because I don't want to stamp it crooked. So I always practice on the bottom of the edge of a paper. Oh, yeah, that's good. Let's just hope it's good on here. Okay, so up around here for our driving by. Gosh, good, good, good. Love it when it comes out straight, don't you guys? <laughs> and not crooked. All right, so our sun. I'm going to put my scrap paper then over here. And put my sun in the corner, kind of peeking so it's coming out the edge here. And then this guy too, as long as we're going to do a sun. I'm going to put it right there. All right, so that's what we got for a yellow daffodil delight color. Our clouds are in the pool party. Um, that now is a photopolymer stamp. So I am going to pull back in my piercing mat. Um, on the inside of this one, I just did birds, but you are more than welcome. Let's see if we do some clouds. So I have this big cloud. on this one. Okay, here's another thing. If you like it at second strength versus first strength, see how much darker that one is? I want it not so dark. So I actually am going to stamp off and then stamp at second strength. And what it does is it makes it look like the clouds are just faintly there. Okay, not because I want my attention on Herbie. All right, so that's I'm done with this one. I need the little guy next. So Hi, Terry. Okay, so don't forget stamp off. And then I've got this one kind of over here. And then this other one is slightly going off the edge. And then I might just do a few in here. All right. So we got to do the birds. We're, we're not done with the black. I'm like, oh, we're done with the black ink. Nope, we're not done. So the birds actually look, you guys, like they're done in gray. Right? So they're lighter. All I did to accomplish that look is I stamped them at second strength. So black stamped off is more like a gray. So stamp off. And then I have them flying in front of the sun. There's that one, and then that one. So, a little bit of lost stamping in this one, okay? So that's what we got. I think we're done stamping. <laughs> we'll see in a second when I say, oh, we forgot to do this. That's always what happens. So, coloring. <laughs> There's a lot of coloring, you guys. I'll be honest with you. Oh, I don't have by the magic of TV done, but we're gonna we're gonna work our way through it. So, black, basic black, um, tires. Outside here. This was the hardest part was coloring the tires because I had to color in a circle, <laughs> and it's really hard coloring in a circle. <laughs> I don't know why, but you had to make sure that you didn't you had to keep it in a circle. It was really hard. Okay. So this is dark basic black. I am not worrying about blending. I am just coloring my tires. That's all I am. Okay, now you guys can color however you want to at home. And I'm going to use gray then for my rims. 
Thanks for sharing, Terry. <laughs> I appreciate it. This was your first car. It was a bog. I love it. Okay, so my rims are gray. My bumper in the back and in the front are gonna be their platinum here. Let's call them platinum. And then I, because I had made that other card first, I already knew I had yellow in with this class, so I made a one present yellow. So pull in your daffodil. And then I pulled in pool party because that was also used in the other card. So I'm like, oh, good. You guys don't have to pull in many more colors then. So we've got, just color your presents however you envision. Granny apple was actually pulled in from that other card too. So I'm like, oh, we're going to make a granny apple green present as well. So that's good. And then there's melon mambo and there's light and there's dark. And so whichever one, I went with light. And so we're gonna do some stripies and that one present on the top. Our car is also Melon Mambo. So take a deep breath. And what I do for coloring little areas like this is I kind of like trace my outline first and then I go in and try to color it all. So whatever the area that I have that's bigger. So the tight spots are what's hard to get with the brush. So I'm just going to take and trace my outline with the fine tip end. And then, you see how I work? I go around, so because I am right-handed, so I can hit it better from this angle. So I turn my paper as I go. And so I'm just working all the way around. And now that I've got my outline done really good, I take the brush tip, and I will color this in with the brush tip. It almost, oh, look at that. It almost looks like the door is like two-tone. I don't know if you guys can see that. But all you have to do to make that darker is color over again. And then do it again. Now you've got that. Now the windows. Don't forget about the windows. We had pool party from the last card, the light and dark. And so I put my windows with this light pool party color. So it made them look like they were lit up a little bit so that's what I got going on for the Herbie love bug the Herbie my love bug okay so we need to get this ribbon down on the back though so grab your tear and tape and put it along the bottom like going up the top you know going vertical and this ribbon needs to get cut in half and so it's six inches and so if you cut it in half that, that should do good. So we're gonna do, I'm gonna do the top one first. So it's like his wheels are right on the road, okay? You're gonna need to put another piece of tear and tape down though to help this next one stick. Otherwise it really won't have anything to stick to. And then this one goes now flush along the bottom. So this is gonna vary depending on how high you stamped Herbie. So that goes there, and then this other one goes there. And now tear and tape, one more. A red bug, yes. They, there was only like five core colors, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm gonna leave this tear and tape. Oh, I'm gonna take it off, because this is gonna get glued onto the Coastal Cabana. Let's get our little scrappers out of here. All right, I think we're done with the tear and tape. And now you can put liquid glue <laughs> behind both of these. I would be very careful not to do that on a very delicate paper because it might leave an impression. <laughs> I've learned from that. Okay, so this guy is going to go on the Coastal Cabana mat right here. And I want my ribbon to come down a hair. There it is. I don't want to see any white peeking out. It's a very cheerful card. If you know a young lady who is getting her driver's license um, or has a birthday coming up or needs some cheering up, this is a perfect card for it. She would love it, okay? And now this, you can either pop this up with dimensionals or glue it flat. We're going for the gold here. We're getting another card done with this bottle of glue. 
And then this goes right here onto our Melon Mambo flap. For some reason, I found an iridescent rhinestone and in your kit, you'll have three of them. So I'm gonna put the one I found right there. I don't know where it came from, but I found it. And then I'm gonna put one here. The iridescent rhinestones match with this card as well because of um, all the pinks and the blues in it. So these are my cotton candy gems. I love them so much. They I don't wanna eat them, but you, they look so good, you could eat them. And so you open this up and then boom, so cool. So I would love to get a card like this. <laughs> so um, very, very nice, you guys. So that is our Herbie Love Bug. I think that that is, that is officially the fourth card. <laughs> we made it through. Wonderful, wonderful. And I hope I didn't lose anybody. I, so people that are new to me, I always have to remind those that get kits for me for the very first time. You don't ever try to keep up with me. I've been told that I stamp very, very fast. I mean, we've been going for over two hours, you guys making four cards. So you can always go back and watch the replay. As soon as I hit the end button up there, you guys can go back, watch the replay, start, stop it. You have a PDF tutorial from me for taking the class. That's my gift to you so that you have a written instruction with all the measurements that you can always go back and refer to. So the question of the hour is always, which is your favorite? I feel like we just did this last night. <laughs> so like there's so many different options. So crazy. Like you have all different color palettes too here, you guys. So I'm trying to think of how I can hold these so that they fit on the screen really nice so you guys can see them all there. And there it is. So, you know, I surprised people with the Island Pineapple, right? Because it wasn't my first choice for a stamp set that I would pick from Celebration, but I wanted it because I love pineapples. Pinapolis, right? Um, first one, Jean Terwilliger. Oh, the, that one. Yep, the fold is so cool on that one. Um, this one's so bright and fun. That one is so soft and soothing. Like the pineapple is so cheerful, makes you want to have that pina colada. <laughs> Susan loves Herbie. Um, Sandy Zidun says she loves them all. They're all her favorite. Herbie, Herbie, you guys like Herbie. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm so happy that I saved Herbie for the last. Um, Hildenel, I don't, oh, do I have, yes, Hildenel, I have fun folds left. Um, I haven't closed the registration for fun folds. So Hildenel, if you're not on fun folds yet, send me a message and we'll make sure we get you on fun folds. So, um, so Carmen still needs to do the pineapple one. So yeah, um, you guys remember whenever you're doing um, my classes with me, don't, try to keep up with me. I have been stamping for over 20 years. I help, I made design, help make, you know, I know what my cards are all about. And so I know what I'm planning to do. When you get them, for me, you guys have a puzzle to put together. You have to lay out the pieces. You have to figure out what to stamp. I've already got like some of the stuff done already, like by the magic of TV. So, so for those that are new to me, like when you get card kits for me, everything that has paper, ribbon, embellishments, anything die cutting, embossing is done generally. Like the only time it wouldn't be is if it's a specific stamp that needs to get die cut. Then I'll give you a piece of paper and then you'd stamp and die cut it. But everything to make these cards, you just need ink, stamps, and adhesives. Um, Ha! Uh -huh. Jeannie Parker's going with Herbie too. So Hildenel, yes, I will try to remember to put you for fun folds, but it would be awesome if you sent me a message too, just to make sure I get you on the class list. That's what's most important. So, um, yay! So another card class in the books, you guys. We, I was just thinking about it. Um, Monday, a uh, Monday is what did I say we were gonna do Monday? Oh, what is Monday? Oh, you guys. Monday night is Paper Pumpkin, and it's that safari celebration. I still have two left. They're not going like hotcakes. So you, if you're interested in the February pump, Paper Pumpkin, um, if, if they're still there on Monday night and two after you're done watching Kelly and you want it, just reach out, let Kelly know or message me. You guys know how to get a hold of me at this point, I think. If you don't, <laughs> look at my screen below. My phone number's there. My email's there. You can Facebook message me. Um, so Kelly's going to be live on Monday night with Paper Pumpkin. And I am planning, you guys, for years, 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 I've been desiring to clean up my craft room. And so I'm going to do some before. And I did a tip Tuesday on this a couple weeks ago. 
about getting rid of scraps and using them and cleaning up. And so I've made it my initiative this weekend. I'm gonna do before and after pictures. So you can see like the before, and then I'm gonna do after. So I'm not saying I'm gonna finish it this weekend, but this is what my goal is. I've been working really hard the last three weeks on designing, um, kidding, publishing, business work, right? <laughs> Tonight, uh, this weekend's for my craft room to get it nice. <laughs> so that's what I'm working on um, this weekend. So I'm gonna have before and after pictures and Kelly will be live Monday night and I'll be live with you guys on tip Tuesday. I'm sometime during the day uh, before six o'clock because I'm thinking that should be my goal. <laughs> so, and then Wednesday celebration, celebration in person. And then next week, you guys celebration, celebration, Facebook live on Thursday. So I think that's about it. Um, did I miss anything besides doing drawings? That I did remember. I didn't forget that. But let's see what we got first. So we're going to do um, the random number generator. Um, let's see here. Hilda now, as long as I've got you right here, I've got you written down. I've got you, Hilda now, written down on the class sign-up sheet for fun folds, okay? So you're on here, I promise. All right. Phone, I need the phone. <laughs> and how many people placed orders to get this? So this is for door prize drawing for whoever placed an order, gets their name in. Um, if you place an order, then you used a host code and it helps me um, offset like by buying products for class and getting papers and I have extra stuff. So I do an, uh, a drawing. So one, two, three, there's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 people, okay? So I'm going to put 10 into my random number generator, you guys. We'll flip down so you can watch it with me. So let's see here. Random. I love how it pops up right away. So we're going to put 10 in here. Oh, look, 10 is already there. And so I'm going to click the word generate. Oh, I'm not, I guess. <laughs> so I'm going to go to chase. Hang on. So there it is. <laughs> so 10. We're going to hit generate. Number two. Lucky number two is Mo. Mo Stites, you are the lucky winner for the door prize drawing for the celebration hoorah rah class. Congratulations, Mo. Very nice, very nice. All right. I have here, we're gonna do these really quick, the heart and home cards. So if you guys, I did not see anybody. I'm gonna hold on to these until somebody, but heart and home, I have one set of kits left here for this class. And these were what we did last Thursday. Did you stop your daytime job? Mary Jean, I did for four weeks. I am on a leave of absence. I have one week left. And then I got to get my stuff figured out. <laughs> so these were the four we did last week, you guys. So I have one of these kits left in case anybody's interested. Drum roll. And the winner for this card is Miss Cheryl Stewart. You are the lucky winner of Diane Bogenhagen's favorite card. Oh, I lost the butterfly. My mom found it on the floor today. I know where that belongs. <laughs> I gotta get that butterfly back on there. Unless it's flying around over here somewhere. Nope, okay. I have a butterfly for that. Drum roll. And the winner is Linda Freund. Oh, there's my butterfly. Look at that. He's stuck there. Linda Freund, you are the winner from sunny Florida. So <laughs> hang on. We're gonna put this guy, the goo is right there. I stick it right back on there. So it's perfect. Well, somebody else lost a butterfly then. Okay, so we had Cheryl Stewart and we had Linda Freund and my two favorite cards. I mean, they're all so pretty, but I just, this purple and I love this one. So drum roll, this one, oh, I'm gonna do this one. Patty Schuler, S-C-H-U-L-E-R, Schuler. If anybody knows Patty, Linda, I don't think I have your address either, but um, Cheryl, I have yours, I'm pretty sure. Um, Patty Schuler, I don't have yours. And lastly, this one goes to, oh, I just love ruffling up the ribbon. Melody Miller, you were who I knew you saw, you said hi earlier. So I'm wondering if you're still watching. I don't have your address, Melody. If you want me to mail you this beautiful card, I need your address. <laughs> the same with Patty Schuler. And Linda Freund. If I don't get addresses, I can't mail cards. So that's the only condition to mail these beautiful cards is I need addresses. So help me out with that. If you guys know any of those people, um, you can definitely refer to them, to me, and get me their address. So congratulations to all those lucky ladies. Last and certainly not least, we are doing celebration board number eight. 
every time you place a $50 order with me, as your Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I put your name on the board and I keep track of it. If you place online order, I, I put it on the board. I, I get it on there. I pick the number for you. If you're in person, you get to pick the number. And for every time the board gets full, I do a drawing for a $25 gift certificate. If you're in person to me, I put the order in and I give you the product. If you're not local to me, then what happens generally is like, this is what Jean Turbeliger is doing is she's placing an order. And then once she places the, she, her, the order, she lets me know, hey, I used my $25 gift certificate for that. I send her a rebate check. So, uh, and I did that with Ann Bellinger and, um, oh my gosh, Pat Gerlach, I need to talk to you yet too because you won one and you haven't cashed in. <laughs> so, all right. So you guys, I'm gonna flip it down so you guys can see me. All right, I'm mean, you guys. So I just like it's like one numbers gets to be the lucky one. It's gonna be this one. Okay, number ten. Okay, so you guys see it. Number ten. Flip back. Laura Sullivan. I don't know if you're still watching. I know Laura's been house sitting all week, and so. She's been binge watching on her net, a Netflix show. So I don't know if she's catching me tonight. I don't remember seeing you in here tonight, Laura. I don't remember catching your name come up, but um, and if I did, it might've been way in the beginning. <laughs> but Laura Sullivan, you are number 10. You placed an order with me a couple, I don't know if it was last weekend, I think. And I got your name on the board. I picked number 10 for you. So congratulations to Laura Sullivan. Woohoo! Yay. Oh, you are still watching. Yay. I figured you would be watching because you you don't try to miss a time when, when, I, when I'm live. So that's awesome. Congratulations, Laura. So that needs to get used like within the next few weeks. Well, it doesn't have to be today or tomorrow. <laughs> it can be if it want, you want it to be. But I usually let them be about a month long. Um, so, um. Congratulations to all you lucky ladies. I will put the post together and schedule it for tomorrow morning so you guys can see the winners um, that pop up in your news feed. So that's awesome. Oh, I don't know what else. Um, I don't know, wish me luck in the, the craft room this weekend. <laughs> You know how it goes, right? You can get like caught up in one thing for hours and not get a lot done. I'm really hopeful that that's not happening. But I plan to like take stuff out, clean, and then bring stuff back in in a different organized manner. <laughs> so <laughs> you're very welcome, Laura. So, oh, wish me luck. I'm going to be in that one good. <laughs> so, all right. I think that is what I have for you guys tonight. Um, at some point too over the weekend, I'm going to try to figure out who else has qualified for celebration celebration. If you are uncertain um, and you have looked back at your notes and you can't find what, what you've ordered and you're curious, specifically reach out to me and say, hey, I know I placed some orders. I might be close. Can you just double check for me? So, oh yes, Laura, we need to talk about signing you up because it's time. <laughs> and that's another note too, because I might not be live before you guys know Monday is the last day to sign up. If you want to become a Stampin' Up! discount shopper or a, 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 a demonstrator, however you want to call it, um, and be a Be Happy Stamper, um, the last day to get the two extra free stamp sets is actually a Monday. And I would be honored and privileged if you picked me to be on your team, if you would be on my team. Um, yeah, it would be so much fun. And so that you get two free stamp sets. And then like Laura had asked, well, do we know what if there's a promotion in March or soon after? And no, we don't. They generally do, if I had to guess, four promotions a year. Last year, they did one in November. They did during celebration, which was August and September. They did during the first celebration, which was January and February. And then I think it was May, they ran a promotion. So that's four that spanned over six months. And so they generally never do one the month after celebration. So um, yeah, so if you want to get an extra discount or a good deal, um, get the two free stamp sets and then you get a 20% discount on all your future orders. So awesome. Okay. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed. And Cheryl said that, oh, Cheryl's watching. Yay, Cheryl. Um, I think you've gotten a card kit from me, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think I have your address, but it wouldn't hurt to resend it to me. <laughs> so I don't have to hunt for it. You guys, that always makes my life easier <laughs> when I don't have to look for things. So, all right, you guys, lots of sunshine, love, and hugs to you. I hope you guys have a fabulous rest of your Friday night. Enjoy your weekend. Make some cards. Do some cooking. Clean up. Have some family time. 
make it a good one. Work a little bit if you need to. I know Feline's off to work already. So um, do whatever you got to do to make it happen, right? <laughs> so, all right, you guys. We'll talk to you later. Love you. Bye.